Sketchcraft is recorded in front of a live internet audience and supported by listeners like you. Please be sure to leave a review on iTunes, like and share our Facebook page, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All links can be found at sketchcraft.com. That's sketchcraft, C-R-A-F-T, the name of the podcast, dot com. Remember, every little bit counts, and it all helps to grow the show. Thanks. Welcome to Sketchcraft, the podcast for art, games, and process junkies. I'm Rob Duenas, full-time illustrator and graphic artist as well. This is an unedited podcast, which will probably contain strong language, so listener discretion is advised. I am R.A. Duaneus, Rad for short, and if you're just tuning in to Sketchcraft for the very first time, you should know that we typically rant about art, movie, and geek-related news stuff chosen by either us or you, hardly ever the audience, and then delve into a topic for the remainder of the show. Joining me today is Arizona's very own Brandon James from LedHeavy.com. Say hi. Hello. And freelance graphic artist, correct? Correct. Right. As well as James Bacon. Say hi. Hello. Editor-in-Chief at Double Plus, Good Games, and a Hollywood Script Ronin. Is that an acceptable title? That is more than acceptable. I, I don't want to ever sound like I'm knocking you or trying to... Be no, I actually, actually, when I read that, I actually really, I was like, man, I, I guess I am, and I really like that. Thank I'm you. Kind of, I'm kind of jealous of it. That's, that's pretty badass. <laughs> well, go to Hollywood, start writing scripts, and sell yourself, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon sells himself. Sorry, James. Oh, man, Bacon Brandon. That's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to use James. Use it's James. Brandon James Bacon. Yeah, that's One right, first. because... Wow, Brandon James, James. See, that's... Wow, look at this. It's like a it's like the Mario Kart logo, right? The uh <laughs> the figure eight, the healer. Okay. So with that being said, let's just jump right into random topics. Uh not guys, stay away from the main topic. We will get to that. Um we'll start off with random talks. I, I do want to start it off though, okay? So okay. let me actually start off with this. So uh basically this show is gonna be a little chaotic. I'm starting a new short form show format. This is episode fifty one. Last time was episode 50. Although if you count up all the casts I've done, it's like 82, right? So all I've right. been doing Game Cave show now for a couple years. Uh, what happens is I like to talk about games. And about two years ago, I hit James up to do Game Cave as what we were thinking about what, three or four times a year as a magazine, maybe three, right? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Quarterly, so forth. And it was really going to be a magazine we make and we offer on like MagCloud so you could buy it individually, whatever. And uh, that went horribly, horribly wrong, right? Yep. (laughs) Yeah, and I've documented that well enough. And so, but we kept, I kept the um, podcast going with, with Wesley just so I had a separate place to talk about video games and try not to mix in the main show. Over the course of the two years, a lot of things have happened. Uh, I re her to Game Cave as a novel slash game magazine. And uh, James, you, you're you aware of what that looks like right now. Yes. And in your own words, so people don't think I'm blowing smoke up my own ass, like like Game Cave, the product that I'm, I'm currently making, um, <laughs> it's it's not, it's it, there isn't anything like it, right? Like, no, no, there isn't anything like it. And things have come close, but it's like you kind of take it over the edge. Like Game Cave, it, it used to – like uh, I mean the, the frame of reference is the old game fan magazine, um, the, the first edition, not the more recent edition, which has since ended. The original um, game fan. Yeah, the original game fan, which was sort of actual real-life editors – assuming the roles of characters and reviewing games in their character voices, or maybe not even in their character voices. It was more like them kind of hiding behind characters. You were taking the idea of character editors and turning it into a story. So it was, you would still get your video game reviews. You would get your retros, you would get your news updates, but it would all be 
told through this character interaction. So it sort of hybridized the comic book and, and video game media ideas together. And uh, literally no one has ever done it before. So the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is uh, it, Game Cave is not, it's not a news in reviews though, in, in that, hey, we're making a magazine, here's all the latest info, right? Like, right, right. It was more a story informed by our experiences playing video games. We would borrow from favorite video games and sort of, again, inform the story in that way. And, and then review, or, or I mean, I, I use the word review only because I don't really know what else to call it, but that's not, I know that when I say review, people think of a certain piece of writing, and that's not really it. That's not accurate. Yeah, well, basically, the game coverage, um, well enough in this issue, more as we move forward, will parallel, in a way, the narrative of yeah. the storyline. So what I'm, tr what I'm trying to say is, it makes no sense to have a podcast talking about news and game reviews, wherein it would get confused. Like, I want Game Cave to be a novel series. I don't want them to, I don't want people to think that it's a magazine you subscribe to or right. that we're doing a podcast every week to talk to you about the latest in gaming news. However, we will still talk about video games here on Sketchcraft because it's just something I like to do. But I don't want to ever be confused moving forward with, oh, they're like retro or electronics gaming monthly. And so having a separate game cave section is just kind of pointless. Also in podcast or podomatic, I'm listed under tutorials design. So what happens is, is I'll end up with four or five, 700 downloads of Sketchcraft and half of those or a third of those will be game cave too. So if I have 700 Sketchcraft downloads in two weeks, I have 150 game cave. Um, it, I, th then there's no way sort of me paying an additional, I'm not gonna pay 50 bucks a month to run two podcasts. It, it, this thing, this show is not cheap. So that makes no sense. But I also was just feeling, and I have been for a while, uh, like especially like when Wesley was around and stuff, like there was this thought that the characters in the magazine represented you, me, and him, right? And initially sure. like that was my backup plan. Like if, if, the, if me writing a story did not work, Game Cave was just going to be us doing game coverage and there would just be cartoon characters and we do it like old game fan, you know? And I would just definitely rewrite whatever you guys wrote to fit that character motif. But the goal was to actually have a universe and an adventure and a story wherein in the world they happen to also make a game magazine that covers Earth games. But it's in the universe. Um, I had no idea if that was going to work. So, but I just spent the last, oh, fuck it. What, 90 minutes or so going over the whole first issue structure with you, right, James? Yeah, something like that. All the goals, mod everything for every character, all the structural stuff. I mean, it'll bore the fuck out of people, right? Um, but it's 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 it has to be done. It's intensive. Well, let's uh, let clarify. Going over structure and whatnot will bore people. The actual subject matter is actually really clever and witty, and it'll be very no, the world is fun. Yeah, that's why I'm just talking about the act of writing. Unless you write, there really isn't anything I can say that more qualified people are already saying on the internet. So I'm not going to get through it. Um, what I want to talk, I'll talk way more about the actual characters and the actual universe and the actual stuff when the book is done. You know, because then I would rather have a discussion about that because uh, I'm very proud of this and I've actually created enough enough of a universe to spend the next ten years writing in it. So. Um, I, I'm very, very, very happy with it. But I just wanted to, this is what I've been doing on top of shipping all of the PowerPrint stuff for uh, for the Kickstarter people. If you are not aware, I briefly top, told, talked about it last week and I'll just briefly say that uh, I have split ways with my former business partner, uh, took over all of his responsibilities and have fulfilled upon them. And this weekend, everything except the international will be shipped for PowerPrints 3. I've already shipped International and Domestic for PowerPrints 2, minus the crossover people for PowerPrints 3, which was like about a dozen. And then um, the Canvas is signed and, and being shipped by my, my my Canvas people. Tomorrow I gotta drive back up to LA or Anaheim and finish signing the PowerPrints 3 Canvas and they'll get all that in the mail. And then I ran out of envelopes. Otherwise all the stuff would be in the mail. But I ran out of envelopes so I have a, have the remaining international, I'm able to ship off four or five. So there's some guys that bought a shitload of stuff. They're going in the mail this weekend so they can be done. 
and they can stop worrying about it. And then, but the amount of shit that I've done in the last two weeks, guys, in terms of power prints and, oh, by the way, all that Avengers shit I did last summer, like, like, like a third of it never shipped. So I discovered that, had to get that put into my database, had to get that logged and tagged with everybody on there. All mass emails have been sent out correcting addresses, and I have the funds to, to, to ship their stuff to them. So I have done three Kickstarters in two weeks worth of data collection and shipping and uh, printing, signing, shipping, packing. Um, on top of writing Game Cave and still producing work. So I'm fucking exhausted. Like, <laughs> 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 to say the least, guys, like, I don't know about you, but, ah, uh, I'm, whoo. <laughs> if it sounded like a lot when I talked about it, you should see what it's like here, you know? So, what have you guys been up to? What do you, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I just want to move into random topics. So this is all the stuff that I've been up to. Also, I've been putting up some speed paint videos. I just put up a Venom speed paint video on the YouTube channel. And I have two more ready to go. I already set up tonight. I'll work on finishing that. I got the Batman Saucy will be next. And the Superior Spider-Man. They're already sped up. I just have to drop music and title cards. So between tonight and next week, those two will be up. And then as I produce more landscape art, which will be starting very soon, I will be having lots more of those. The landscape speed paints will get first priority over Copics and shit like that moving forward. I do get a lot of requests for that, so I'm going to bring it up. Um, Brandon, I want you to ignore anything Star Wars for now. Right? Oh, damn it. I want No, we will get to this later. <laughs> because of the main topic, I'm going to bring it up then for reasons right. I don't want to get into. Aside from that one topic, pick something out of your <laughs> list. Let's roll with it. B the Batman picture and then the new logo and title revealed for the movie. Elaborate. Okay. <laughs> uh, Superman v. Batman Dawn of Justice is the title they are going with. How do you feel about that? James? Uh, I was... I, well, I, I don't feel strongly about it. I was not moved in one direction or the other. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Um, the logo seems very same to what I've seen before. I don't know if what I'd seen before were fan mock-ups or studio... No, it's the one from Comic-Con. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing then. Texture, so, okay. but yeah. All right. Okay, thanks. I mean, I guess you just made it official. And then the <laughs> the, the subtitle, whatever. It could have been just Batman versus Superman. That's what everyone was calling it anyway. Um, it didn't have to have that. Because what does that mean? What does Dawn of Justice mean? <laughs> I'm sure it's a... I, I know what it means. I'm sure it's a lead into the Justice League, but like seriously... Right. Can, can, I, can I elaborate here? Yeah, please do. Can I, can I illuminate... This is no different than an internet has such a short term memory. It gets worse every day. This is no different than Captain America semicolon the first Avenger. And when Captain America semicolon the first Avenger title first leaked on the internet, oh, what a horrible title. It's just a lead into the Avengers. It should just be called Captain America. They're doing this for foreign markets. It'll just be called the first Avenger. They won't even say it's Captain America overseas. You know, it's going to be horrible. Movie comes out. I love it. No one cares about the fucking title. No, now, I was I was equally as unmoved about the first Avenger as I am about Dawn of Justice. I just that, I don't feel strongly one way or the other. Like, now oh, okay, you there. could rebut. You could rebut to my statement and say, but Marvel, you know, uh, no, 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 has such a great track record, whatever. Guys, they don't have such a great track record. People didn't like The Incredible Hulk. I did when it came out. People didn't. People hated Iron Man 2, said the idea of making all these standalone films is pointless and will never work, and it's just leading to something bigger. And now, because Avengers worked, which shows you it's, how, it's the landing, not the, not the takeoff, because the Avengers worked, uh, everyone's like, you have to do a bunch of standalone movies and lead to the Avengers. Now, DC made a movie with a very simple title called Green Lantern. It wasn't Green Lantern, the Emerald Creation Knight of Super Something. And the fucking movie sucked. So the title doesn't mean anything to me. I think marketing won out over creative in this instance. I agree. Not a very eloquent title. It's just to ensure marketing that people know Batman and Superman are in the movie. And the reason why, in my opinion, the S was dropped from the V was because they would have SS together. And in foreign markets, you can't put the letters SS <laughs> next to one another without changing it to the little squiggly sign the Germans came up with. 
Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, and but if you're... Oh, I understand what you mean. And folks, if you think I'm crazy on this, you've never sat in a fucking room with a bunch of marketing people. I have <laughs> on licensed properties. And I'm telling you right now, they only care about the foreign release now. If you look at Transformers 4, to make a parallel, all the marketing materials, all the same, it's set for the China, for the foreign Asian market. They don't, they figure they got the Americans one way or the other. They're guaranteed two, 300 million in the States. They want the 700 million overseas. Okay, so Transformers 2, that movie we all hate, was set in China, story-wise, was shot in Jersey. They never went to China. And now, there it's in China. You know, even though it, it takes place in Kansas, oh, now we're not magically in China. Why are we in China? Well, we're in China because they got to have a foreign market. Grimlock looks like a fucking dragon because they got to sell it to China. So I'm telling you right now, the foreign market is the bigger deal over there, you know? And, and the foreign market doesn't care if a title super long or short. Only in the West do we care about simplifying everything down to one word, <laughs> right? And if you watch anime, you'll know this is true. <laughs> like how many animes are just simply titled you know like it, very few man a lot of them are like something 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 semi clash to something something one piece and something something adventure and the shiny the fisted star and whatever so to me this that's all it is it's 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 a little boring as a fan it has, speaks it speaks nothing, nothing about the production of the film. And I think what drives me nuts about this is when fucking places like Screen Film Junkies, Comic Alliance fuckbags go around saying, this is what's wrong with comic book movies. When you just had Captain America, semicolon, the Winter Soldier, which may as well just been called Captain America v. Bucky, because it doesn't matter. It's the same fucking thing. Just got a 90% tomato meter and made fucking a billion dollars worldwide, you know, or 700 million, whatever, you know? Like, how are comic book movies dying? And in, in the same week, X-Men semicolon, the days of future past, it has like a 90% tomato meter and will probably make a gazillion dollars. They go, but Spider-Man sucked. And I'm like, well, yeah, so did Green Lantern. I didn't stop the Dark Knight or Man of Steel, you know? I... <laughs> I don't know, guys. You know, like, Brandon, you got anything to add? I'm, I'm ranting. I did not realize that V was such a hot topic button for you. That, <laughs> that set you off. No, not me. You haven't been following the forums, you know? Yeah. Like, and, like, and the endless articles being written on Twitter by by <laughs> the Slash Film guys and, and Batman, uh, El Mayimbe, and, you know? Superman V, Batman V, Wonder Woman V. Now, now all the jokes are it's a legal courtroom and he has a grievance against Superman. And this is, and I'm just like, does it matter? Does it, people are going to say Superman, Batman. That's how they're going to call the movie. It could have been a slash in the fucking title for all, you know? That's what they're going to call. I think the more creative title would have just been Man of Steel, semicolon, The Dark Knight Returns. You know? But I think the problem with that, right, creatively, is that they just had a sequel called The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. And if you say The Dark Knight Returns, I guess you run the risk of people thinking it's tied to that franchise. I guess. Some weird logic, you know? And so they decided to focus, instead of being about Batman coming back, the dawn of the Justice League. You know Justice League is coming, you know? Which they've already said. The fucking president of Warner said they're making them back to back. Like, it's not even, like, hidden the first Avenger, Dawn of Justice. So, I mean, so what did you think of it? What did you think of Batman's look? I think it's the greatest fucking superhero costume for Batman ever made. And and before this, I felt the Batman, the Burton one, artistically was the best, and the Dark Knight uh, was probably the most functional and well, you know, put together. Right. Uh, but I love the cape from Batman Begins, though, I think more than the Dark Knight. But he uh... looked badass on the fucking motorcycle, you know. But, dude, it is the perfect blend between f fucking f Tim Burton and Nolan and Frank Miller. Like, it looks sick. It's got fucking knots and checks and streaks and webbing and just, it just, it's mean, you know? Like, right. The texture and the cowl, you know? Like, it has that Burton leathery texture back, which I love. And if you've seen Watchmen, you know this shit's going to look fucking badass. Like, right. <laughs> Dude, Sucker Punch had a great title. And look at that movie. <laughs> I don't know, guys. You know, like, I don't, I don't know. You know? Next topic. That's good. Yeah, anybody have anything to add to this? Have I, have I said mm -hmm. too much? Uh, you, you, 
You covered all bases. I've talked too much about this. You guys should <laughs> talk for a while. James, you pick something. Uh, I'm going to switch media and, and, and talk about the new Ghost Rider that everyone absolutely hated the look of. I don't know if you remember, like several months ago, they released the new look for Ghost Rider. It was going to be a Marvel Now. And You're talking about the comic book. Yeah, the comic book. People lost their ever-loving minds because, oh, he's not on a motorcycle and it looks stupid and I can't believe they so threw him this way. describe for the people who don't know what you're talking about. In the comics, right. there's a In new the ghostwriter called Robbie Reyes, right? Yes, his name is Robbie Reyes. Um, the, the, the comics, it's only up to issue three. It's one, two, three, and P, they, they haven't really established the spirit of vengeance quite yet. So I don't know if it's the spirit of vengeance that attached itself to, you know, Johnny blaze and all those other people, or if it's just a spirit of vengeance, but that's immaterial. The story about Robbie race. And this, this is, I'm sort of going to tie it in with the new miss Marvel. Um, uh, Kamala Khan. So there's Robbie Reyes and Kamala Khan and Marvel has uh, recently, there's been an air of inclusion across all formats of media. Um, you know, the outcries of feminism, outcries of, of, of race. It's not necessarily racism, but just, uh, well, you know, male white privilege has been a discussion. And so I think a lot of these companies have been doing their best to, to fill in these rather large cracks and divides in, in their consumer bases. And Robbie Reyes, Kamala Khan are an attempt to do that. Kamala is, she comes from a Muslim background. She's Pakistani. She becomes, she calls herself, Miss Marvel, because as it's an homage to Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel. And Robbie Reyes becomes Ghost Rider. But these stories, first of all, I want to say, if you don't like, after the first three issues of Ghost Rider and four issues of Miss Marvel, if you don't like those books, you are wrong. Number two, it's no longer about this character who is... It's not like Captain Latin America, where, like, this guy's identity is Latin American. No, he's Ghost Rider. He's Robbie Reyes. He has an underprivileged brother who he has to take care of in a really bad part of Los Angeles. He takes him to school. He picks him up from school. It's a human story. He just happens to be Latino, Latin American. And Kamala Khan's the same way. She goes to school. She asks her parents to go to parties. She's too young. They won't let her go. She, you know, her brother has restricted her into to the faith. Her father's not so strict. So there's this whole family dynamic that is the result of her culture. It doesn't identify her as a person. And I think that those, those two characters, it's, it's, it's just so important in this day and age. I am not a social justice warrior. I think that social justice crusading really sort of infringes upon intelligent, critical conversation. But I think that in this context, it's excellent. And when you, when you sort of, you know, and no one wanted this. No one wanted Robbie Reyes as a ghost rider because of the look. He's not on a motorcycle. He's in a muscle car. He's not, you know, he doesn't use chains. He uses fire most of the time or his bare hands to beat people up, at least in the first three issues. Um, his face isn't, it's not a skull. His skin doesn't melt away to reveal a skull. It looks more like a stylized racing helmet and visor. And it's, it's got very sharp angles and very distinctly non-human lines. And people were upset about that. And you want my take on it? Yeah, go ahead, please. My take on it, just looking at it, was Marvel got the Ghost Rider rights back, right? The movie rights. Yeah. Uh, the Ghost Rider as a character has always been a nice image. As a movie, it's a fucking skull that can't emote. It just looks weird. Yes. It goes nowhere. They had to create a story that's a human story, so they made him human. And if you just take Drive, you know, meets a movie I, I used to love when I was a kid called The Wraith, you know, and you sort of slap them together with a little bit of Fast and the Furious, you get this. So my guess is we're looking at the next cinematic Ghost Rider from Marvel. I'm, I'm absolutely okay with that as long as it sticks to what the comic book is establishing. Well, I always and, tell people, look, Ghost Rider always look cool, but name one good Ghost Rider story. Like, name one, guys. Yeah, like, you, you can't. You can't because it's no. – it, I mean, you, you can't. Brandon, what do you I, think? Um, well, from him talking about it, I, I kind of want to read it now. You know, I, I don't buy comic books anymore, but from what – how he described it, I was like, oh, shit, this sounds pretty good, you, you know? Um, uh I have no problem with it. I worked on a little bit of that new Miss Marvel for the Marvel AR stuff, and I saw it, and it was a cool design. You know, it's kind of 
just different, you know, I guess a teen look to it. It's not all just big boobs and muscles everywhere. I like but... that the book isn't drawn all realistically. You know, right. it's drawn well enough. I'm just saying that. I mean, and obviously the cars from a fucking 3D model. But um, the uh, at least the characters have a comic book drawnness to them, you know? Like, no, I, I like the style. I prefer less realism in my comic. Book I art. prefer my comic books looking like fucking comics. Yeah, like, <laughs> every, every time. I like line arts. I don't like photo paintings. I like to know that someone drew it and that it looks like someone drew it, and that there's lines and that the characters emote. And I could care less if they're fucking paint overs and models, but that's another story. So, hey, good good job bringing that up. I'm I'm still not going to read the book because I don't read Marvel comics, but um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the the version, you know. And the, the, I guarantee this either it's a TV show or it's a movie, you know. But it's kind uh, of I'll I I will give it the benefit of the doubt either way. Could be a Netflix movie. Yeah, I'm fine with it Maybe. either way. I'm not against it being like I said. If you guys never saw The Wraith, it was a pretty cool movie when I was a kid. It's not a deep film, you know. But uh. If you take the Wraith and drive, you kind of get this. And I like Fast and the Furious. And I throw a little heist in there. And, I mean, I'm there, you know? All right. Brandon? Next topic? Next topic. Constantine trailer on NBC. All three of us seen it? James? No, I haven't you seen it. You didn't see it, James? No, and it was all over my Facebook wall. And I'm, I'm pretty sure even now as we speak, <laughs> I have a tab open with it. I just haven't watched it. You want to take a break and watch it? Yeah, you know what? Give me a second. I'll uh... just take a break. All right, I'll move to a different topic. Real quick, side topic. Rob, will 2D animation type Disney movies ever make a comeback? Well, I can tell you right now, they already spent a lot of money trying to do that with The Princess and the Frog. And do I think the future is 2D animation? No. Do I think 3D? Not really. I think the future for animation and frozen's kind of proof of this they spent a long time doing this and that short paper man is the tools to make 3d will become more like 2d animation it won't be me having to learn this giant rig animators will be able to animate 3d movies the way you would 2d so you can start to do 2d kind of framing and stuff but get the depth of 3d and mm -hmm. they will also look more artistic if you look at the uh new peanuts movie coming out it looks like charles schultz art in 3d Right. And yeah, like I always really said good. before, how great would The Dark Knight Returns as a cartoon movie, cartoon in quotes, if it was 3D but also rendered in that Miller style, you know? Right. Like, we don't do 2D well in the States, bro. Like, we don't do it. We just don't. Our, our idea of 2D animation that we do well is like Futurama and Rick and Morty, Beavis and Butthead. The stuff coming out of it, you think we're going to pull off Attack on Titan with Disney? No. No, we're not pulling off Kill la Kill, you know? And that uh, show's fucking bonkers, by the way. Thanks. It, I kind of mad at you for recommending it because once I start watching, I got to keep watching it. But that show is bananas. Watch like, the show twice; it's even better the second time. <laughs> no, really, because the ridiculous. arcs hold up. It's really nice. But getting back to your statement, I believe the tools uh, are ever coming closer and closer to 2D animation tools. So, could I see them making a film shot and staged and framed? the way they used to do 2D, but it was rendered in 3D, but has a 2D quality? The answer is, yeah, they already did it with Paper Man. Right. And I see that moving that way. So then the look becomes merely a stylistic choice, stylistic choice, which you're seeing now in video games, where a lot of the new next-gen games, right, the mm -hmm. second next-gen games, are being more, they're being more colorful, more artistic, you know, rather than just a push for straight realism, like Mass Effect and Fallout. All right. So, yeah. Let's see. James is still. Is he still gone? Uh, you were using the quill tips. Like you stopped using your multi liners when you're inking and switching. Yeah, to... I moved from multi liner pens to to dipping the pen, the quill, the the deleter comic nibs, and now I've gone back to pens. Um, let me explain to you why. I'm going to continue to use quill. I think it's fantastic. I love the precision. I love the thinness I can get with it. However, for my Copic commissions, it makes fucking zero sense in terms of time. Like, I, it right. could take me 30, 40 minutes to ink a whole piece with, with pens. With the multi-tip, it could take two and a half hours. Because I'm just not confident with it right now, and I'm trying to get things really clean. My goal with the quill is to be able to lay down a rough pencil sketch like Capullo used to, 
and then like McFarlane and them go in there and ink it all crazy, you know, like Calapion or McFarlane. Right. Crazy. Like that's a different look. Not not for all my art, you know, but for the clean stuff like with I need with the Copics. You can't ink. You know, it's very difficult to ink or to color with Copics. The kind of stuff like with all that noodling, because um, uh -huh. <clears throat> really the Copics do all the work. In the case of that, it's better just to have it open and to use the pens. So it's just a matter of trying, you know, what works, what doesn't work, uh, and then figure out what's the best tool for the job. Um, it's been a nice, uh, it, there's a nice video. If you guys go see the Superior Spider-Man, there's a part where I ink it on the YouTube channel in real time. And like I start with quill tip and then like I get done with that. I'm like, fuck this. And I reprint it out and do it in pens. What In like 20, 30 minutes, it's crazy. The amount of time it took to do it with pens. Yeah. yeah. It's been like two hours and I get done like in 30 minutes. And you were like, you know, Rob, sometimes you just do things because you want to prove you can. There's no real need to. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like that part of me. You know, yeah. I don't like it. But, you know, at the same time, I tried. I figured out I, I do still want to use it. I'm proud of it. Um, there's also another look with the brush I want to use where, you know, the creature bot guys have that have that heavy inking style. Uh -huh. And I've done a few of it. I just haven't shown anybody. I can mimic that style pretty well. I, I want to have some of that style in here and there, um, all with brushwork and stuff like that. So I want to, but I think that that's something that I can push because that's where you take a basic sketch and then you're rendering with the brush. But when right. it comes to doing very clean art, there's just no point to doing that with the fucking quilt. I'll be here all day, you know, stressing over one stupid fucking line. Um, James, did you watch it? Holy crap. So your thoughts on the Constantine trailer. I don't know why I didn't watch it sooner. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> why Brandon? are you excited? Um, be because it looked like it. It looks like He's it's going. He's afraid now to say he liked it. No, I'm not. It looks like it. In my experience, looks like it accurately communicates Hellblazer in a serialized television experience. I'm excited for it, <laughs> but but let me qualify that by saying uh -oh. I like everything. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like Agents of Shield? Oh, I fucking hate late Agents of Shield. It is okay. the worst. Nobody likes Agents. Of Shield. And I knew it was going to be bad before it even like. Uh, it's awful, and they should be ashamed of themselves, and and shame on them for renewing. Yeah, even James has a line, Brandon. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm just making sure, man. He said he liked everything. No, Agents of Shield is trash. Senor think... Bacon has a limit. I think Constantine looks really good. I think, if, just from my point of view, it looks like they spent the money to make it look good, and everybody seems to fit the look of it. I mean, the guy who's playing, you know, Constantine looks like, I can't think of the artist rendered it, but it looks like what I would think of when I've seen Constantine books with the blonde spiky hair, the real skinny frame, you know, almost well, Tim Bradstreet? Junky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, He lives look. here in San Diego, right? I did not know that. Yeah, he lives in El Cajon. My buddy Joe, we all know, uh, used to work at Applebee's in El Cajon, and he'd come in all the time. He'd go, Tim Bradstreet, and he'd give him free drinks and shoot the <laughs> shit with him about Punisher covers. And he'd say to Joe, yeah, man, I just trace over photos. People think I draw this stuff. It's pretty funny. <laughs> and he's like, Joe's like, no, you do more than that. He's like, well, you know, thanks. But he always put right. himself down, but he's a great artist, right? Yes. And yeah, we all like Tim Bradstreet. Um... But yeah, it looks like they they put the money in and into it and the effort into it, and it's not going to be a half-ass show. And I like Arrow, but Arrow didn't put doesn't have the money that it looks like they put into Constantine or even the new Flash show. Arrow's been getting more money. I think Arrow is a move is uh, is a show that started out as a CW project and they didn't know which way it was going to go, and they have just pushed it pushed it more towards a mature you know, comic book show. The only thing they need to do now is trim the episode countdown so they can cut out the right. fucking filler. Um, but, I mean, the the season ending to Arrow compared to the beginnings, night and day, you know? Right. I think once they got to the Deathstroke story arc of really him, that's when it started to just Let's stick to Constantine, though, before we get into that. So, but with the Constantine trail, I agree with you guys. It looks phenomenal. And the future, like, there's this whole article, hold on. I hate that yawn burp thing. <laughs> there was this whole article about the death of Hollywood movies and how they'll do themselves in because there's too many of them. And I don't believe that at all. Uh, I believe the death of Hollywood superhero movies will be the TV shows. 
uh, not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but things like Green Arrow, Flash, Constantine's a good step in that direction. Probably Daredevil. You know, if they if they hit Daredevil at the park, that could really hurt Marvel movies more than help them. Because the limits of television mean that you don't go too far with destruction porn. And, you know, like you actually stick to choreography. And I look at it, I just watched uh, The Raid again with my buddy. Uh, he had never seen it. And I keep thinking of the fights in The Raid. And I'm like, wow, you know, like in a big, bu- compared to the sequel where they, they did giant fight sequences, which is still cool. But you compare that to you know, say Man of Steel or something, where you just, because of the budget, you really focus on on actual combat, you know? Like, the budget, the limits of the budget force creativity. Um, and we ha- we can do so much now with a limited budget that if it's not being done, it's because, to me, it's just ignorance, you know? The Constantine trailer looked phenomenal. What they get away with on TV now, they'll never be able to get away with in a movie. You know, you can do R-rated content on TV because it's in the private of your own living room. Right. You know? But you go to a theater and sit in a room with people you don't know, it's seen as taboo. And I think that they, that, like, in the fact an era where people die and get hacked up and all sorts of stuff, they would never do that in a Batman movie. Ever. It's not happening. You know? So, Arrow at times pushes the boundaries of Watchmen. When you think about it. You know, minus the nudity. But on the Netflix, that goes out the window. So think about this, guys. To say we all agree the Constantine looks tr- cool. I know you wrote down Daredevil, but think about Daredevil, Iron Fist, and the other shit they're making uh, over with at Netflix. Netflix does this format where when they release the series, the whole thing goes up at once, right? Right. All at once. House of Cards, everything at once. And Quesada was talking this past week about Daredevil. He's like, they're shooting it like a 13-hour movie. And he just assumes that People will be watching it straight through. So we're not going to, they're like them. They're saying they're not going to just, you know, in every episode re-reference info. You probably just watch two hours prior. They're just going to be like, watch that fucking episode, get the info or don't. Which means all that shit in the arrow, the useless filler shit where they re-remind you. Right. You know, and you're like, I got to do this because you do that because you do this. And you're like, no one fucking talks like that. Like, 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 stop reminding me of the shit I just watched because, you know, they... Uh, that's going away. So imagine you have that going away, and then at the same time, Daredevil, imagine in that that you get to do the hardcore violence because it, it, for a Marvel, they're never going to go R-rated, but you know sword penetrating through Elektra all bloody. They can do that on Netflix. Right, teeth getting knocked out from a billy club. Yeah, they can do that on Netflix. That's going to ruin the superhero movies because you want to know why? You're going to go to the superhero movies and be like, there's no consequence. You know? <laughs> That shit I saw on fucking... Like, there's a scene in the raid, in the beginning, right towards the beginning. It's not a spoiler. They kick a guy off a beam. He flips over, and his back lands square on the fucking rail, you know? And it's like, oh, sh- you just don't... Fuck, that hurt. Like, <laughs> and that ends up in a Daredevil show, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's going to make, like, Guardians of the Galaxy seem like Smurfs. <laughs> you know? Just this is how Americans are. So, James, do you have anything to add on this stuff? No, no. I only just saw the trailer. I agree with what you said regarding uh, consequence, um, because television series can th- they project out. You know what I mean? It's not just one two and a half hour. If we're lucky, two and a half hour piece of entertainment. It's got several hours to fill, and so they can really, you know, they can really develop a plot to cater to that sort of long-term consequence-laden narrative. So I, I agree with everything that you just said, but, I mean, you really... I'm, I'm just going to re-say what you said, so... Forgive me for not having anything to well, add. Well, I need you guys to talk you. first, so I don't, you know... I don't... Take all the good answers, Rob. Well, fucking yeah, come Rob. up with your own opinions, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're this... allowed to have those? I prepared for this cast, all right? I prepared. So let's move on. Let's just skip everything else, and we'll talk about other stuff later. Let's move on to the final topic. Let wait, me... wait, 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 wait. What? I want to bring something up that you said I have to bring up. Oh, really? You know what? Yeah, do that. Do that right yeah, now, but I don't want I it. Will. That's the best time. Do it. Once upon a time, the TV show adds <laughs> the Frozen character to next season's lineup. Spoilers alert. Spoiler alert. 
Just if like... you say the spoiler before the spoiler alert, it null and voids the spoiler alert, Brandon. <laughs> like... <laughs> plot. Darth plot, Vader turns out reveals. to be Luke's father. Spoiler alert. Like... <laughs> <laughs> So my wife watches this show. I end up watching it because, you know, you sit down. Shocking. And, you know what? <laughs> Rumble still skin on this show. And I told you I was say it's it awesome. I don't care what you say. He's a badass. Yeah, tell me how him. great Rumble Stiltskin is again. I just... He is cool as shit. They intertwine. Now, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this show a little credit here. They intertwine Rumble Stiltskin through every kind of Disneyland story. So he was like the beast in Beauty and the Beast and he was the crocodile because he has green skin and Peter Pan. Fuck you, Rob. So, <laughs> I haven't the, said anything. No, with the silence. I know. Huh? Like, whatever. <laughs> keep, keep going. So anyways, they add the Frozen character at the end of the show. It does her little hand thing. Everything turns to ice and shit. My wife's pissed as shit. She doesn't like the Frozen stuff. She doesn't care about it. And she's mad because they're just adding in, obviously, money rating. And she gets it. There. That's my little... I just wanted to add that. I don't know what you just said, and we're all dumber for having heard it. Like, this I know. This, this, if that statement ever is true, thank you. We're all, we're all it dumber comes for out of nowhere. It. We're all like, dumber for having heard about it. Something blah, 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 blah Rumpelstiltskin, something blah, 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 Frozen, blah, 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 wife's pissed as shit, fuck you, Rob. There, that's what you just said. <laughs> Alright. I just wanted to... It's in there. James, you, uh, do you have anything to add about Rumpelstiltskin? And... No. Have, have you seen the show, James? Nope. I do like Disney a lot, but I have avoided that show. This oh. show is good. I mean, it's got its, it's got its, it's got its filler episodes like every other show, but they do a good job. Well, just... here's, here's my thing. I have seen Grimm. I have not seen Once Upon a Time, and I just it's, I haven't seen it's like Grimm. a Grimm's like a. I've seen the trailers. A, yeah, it's not a Disney fairy tales. It's a real world fairy tales. Like here are cultural fairy tales from you know real people around the world, and they're actually real. And okay, oh, oh, I'm okay. done. I'm oh, sorry. It doesn't. Hold on, let's... Come on, guys. Hey, no, just give no. Zenoscope its own fucking network. All right, no, gotta, and like get on topic. with it. Like I got a good topic. How about we just talk about the raid for two hours? Rob would love that. So in the raid... yeah, I'll take the fucking raid over once upon a time in your Rumple fucking still skin. But that, that's week. your that's been your go to the whole podcast. You're like it's the, the greatest and... action film made, <laughs> in, 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 and since hard boiled, bro, or the first Matrix film. Listen, Batman would be better if he was in the raid. Batman so... would be better if he fought at the fight choreography. And by the way, you know, if anyone could pull it off, it's Snyder, because I still say <laughs> the best fight I've seen in a superhero movie is the opening of The Watchmen. Right. When the comedian gets to ever live, I still watch. I'm like, just stay for that. I mean, even if you don't like the movie, you can't tell me that he didn't get the ever living shit kicked out of him. James, I'm looking forward to Superman v. Batman v. The Raid. That's going to be a good movie. <laughs> You know what? You know what I like about you, Brandon? <laughs> you know what I like about you? Oh, shit. You know what I like? No. It's your appreciation for the finer things in life. You know? <laughs> all the Mountain Dew, uh, all the junk food, and superhero slash wannabe fairy tale shows. And, and, and how you completely hate Asian cinema. And then yet you come around. I hate anime. Fuck anime. Remember all that? And then I see Attack on Titan and Kill a Kill. I, I didn't right? say And eventually, anime. you just... will get what I'm talking about, and then I'll get that, fuck you, Rob was right. I hate you. You know? But continue to watch one. Someone needs to watch the show. They need to be employed. You know? I'm certain if, if you're a fan of would-be fairy tales, you'll probably enjoy the show. I don't think it's doing a disservice. I'm just telling you I don't care. You know, <laughs> I, I like Asian cinema when it works right. And I love John Carpenter movies where they're stuck in a hellhole and got to fight their way out. And so the raid fits both. It's assault on precinct 13 meets hard boiled, you know, <laughs> like, and it just works. So, uh, but once upon a time, you're right. I mean, it's fascinating that the rumple still skin is multiple characters and, and, uh, wow. Okay. So, James. <laughs> yes. James, uh, don't see the raid. It's completely pointless. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, Brandon, Brandon loved Judge Dread though. So, and he got I all did. mad. I did, and I know it's just the raid. I get it. Just going up, all that. I get it. 
Ray. It's a Ray with consequence. So there you go. So uh, let's move on to our main topic: Godzilla. Rawr! That was pretty accurate. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't All know right. how that was going to go. All right, all right. It was it was better than Ken Watt Nobby's. Did you hear that? <laughs> no. It was much better than his. Yeah. All right. So before we start with this whole Godzilla review, first off, spoilers. Everything. I don't fucking care about mixing it up. Everyone's seen the movie, and if you spoilers. haven't, turn off the podcast. Move on. Okay. Um. So. Brandon or James? Brandon, James. Bacon, Brandon, whatever. Whoever wants to go first, you guys go. I'll leave it up to him. I, okay, I, I'm going. Okay. Go for um, it. I give it probably 7.5 or an 8 out of 10. Well, first, first, hold on. Props <laughs> to Brandon for calling opening weekend. I have oh, to yeah. say, yeah. I said it. if it was a success, it would break 70. I didn't see that happening. Brandon said 100 million. Brandon got closest to the dollar without going over. So congratulations, by the way. Yes. That's like You're a in the first. showcase showdown, Brandon. Right. Yeah. It's a first. I'll blow it. I'll blow it. I'll, I'll, pick, <laughs> I'll pick the jet skis. I'm going jet skis and trailer. Um, I, I know you got to have the human side of the Godzilla story. I just feel like it was too much. Like the whole first half was just all this guy and his family and bullshit. And then they teased at the Godzilla with him fighting on TV. And then finally you get the main bouts. I wish they would have thrown in some little monsters here and there. Maybe, I don't know. I just feel like there wasn't enough Godzilla in the Godzilla movie. Can I counterpoint that real quick? Go. I I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate what you're saying. But I am, uh, when I took a look at this Godzilla, and then I put it in the context of the original 1954 film, the vast majority of that film, number one, was Godzilla was an he was a metaphor, duh, for nuclear war and the consequences of man having meddled with this technology and right. nature versus man, blah, blah, blah. But the vast majority of that film focused on Dr. Sarazara, Emiko, and Ogata's love triangle, and only after the 30 minute setup of, you know, reporter, I forget, I think it's Michael Smith going to Japan as a segue from Egypt to meet his friend. Like, there was a whole big, and this is the American release of the film, obviously. There was a whole big, almost unimportant pit bit in the first 30 minutes, and then it focused on life going on against the backdrop of the horror of nuclear war. And I feel that this movie especially, well, I mean, the shooting script was completed uh, not even a year ago. And the film was completed, and then it released, and it really sort of echoed the Fukushima nuclear disaster. There was an earthquake in the Pacific that led to a tsunami that ruined a nuclear power plant, which eventually made its way across the ocean to Hawaii and then the California coast. And they had specifically stated that that was their intention to sort of mirror it on modern-day events that, that are horrific and 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 you know, that they're absolutely dehumanizing, but I liked it for that reason. I liked the sparing nature with which they use the monsters because in the original film, you could remove Godzilla and it's a war movie. It was very serious in tone. There were, there were lamenting adolescent women in a choir who were singing dirges. There were people who were lined up in shelters who were missing limbs. Who It, it looked like a nuclear fallout. It just, just was a big dinosaur thing. So I hear what you're saying. I, I understand what you're saying. I appreciate what you're saying. I just really like how they, you know, they really did a good job in taking a 1954 film, modernizing it, making it relevant to modern events, and then releasing it. I, I loved it from start to finish. I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I gave it an 8 out of 10. I saw it in IMAX 3D. It I was, said 7.5. Uh, I said 7.5 slash 8, right on the border mm -hmm. there. Um yeah, I get it. I mean, I'm not. A, I don't know any much of the the past movies and stuff. So I was going in as a as a new viewer to it, and I guess the genre because I'm not a monster guy. But I mean, I gotta say, when and more spoiler alert, when Godzilla did whatever ray blast, I don't know what to call it, down the monster's throat, that was probably one of the coolest things I've seen in a movie in a long time. Yeah, maybe, it totally was. <laughs> maybe like in my top ten coolest badass shit. Where because I thought he was gonna do the generic uh, King Kong rip the 
T-Rex jaw off type shit. And then all of a sudden he just shoots fire and melts the dude's neck off. I was like, oh shit. Like, yeah, that was rad. That's badass. Rob, go. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm, what? I'm, I'm listening to everything you guys have to say. That's all I got. So you both, you both liked it. Yeah, um, I liked it. Okay, so let me talk about my thoughts on the movie. Um, I think to understand what the filmmakers were attempting to achieve with this film, you need to look at a movie called Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And you may as well call this movie Close Encounters of the Kaju Kind. And if you look at the structure for Close Encounters, uh, an alien invasion movie of sorts, <clears throat> told through a humanistic perspective where a man leaves his family to go join the aliens you have it almost in reverse wherein a man leaves the monsters to go rejoin with his family and you can almost see exact shot for shots in reverse in this film from close encounters uh about a guy you know the government pretended that they're in the in close encounters they pretend there's a chemical weapons attack or a virus or something to to get people to leave because they know the aliens are going to come land there and in this one they pretended there was a nuclear fallout to keep people away because they had they're holding a monster um there's just so many similarities a i was talking to my friend about this and and she was like well in close encounters everyone's the guy's seen the mashed potato thing you know what's the mashed potato thing and i thought about it for a second and in close encounters the mashed potatoes he, um What's his face? Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Fucking Boyo from Jaws. Richard Dreyfuss is, keeps rebuilding this, the Half Dome. The Half Dome is this mashed potato. It's a replica of the mountain, the Half Dome, where the aliens are going to land. And in the front part of this movie, Brian Cranston's character is trying to get data back, right? And when they load up the data, the data looks just like the Half Dome. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's almost a perfect match. And I don't know if this is uh, intentional or subconscious, but I think when you frame the idea of doing, and 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 J.J. Abrams, I said, J.J. Abrams and this guy should hook up, walk out the movie, because the guy is obviously a fan of, of Spielberg, and J.J. is a fan of Spielberg. When you have the train sequences, you have the, the thing where they're entering the towns, then they go into the... Um, the, the, the city, he wants to find his wife, apparently, and she's blonde and she has a kid and he has to reunite the kid with her. If you think about Close Encounters where the, the woman gets reunited with her kid, the guy goes into the light and sees the aliens. There's a scene at the end of this movie where he, the light is in front of the guy's face, the lead guy, and this air pilot looks over him and he looks just like an alien. And um, I really believe their way through this film, the human experience, was that scenario from Close Encounters there's even a fucking submarine thrown into the middle of a jungle, guys, in this movie, which is a direct scene from Close Encounters, uh, wherein the submarine is lying in the middle of a desert. And there's uh, the mysterious, uh, there, there's the professor that runs around trying to put all this stuff together, which is Ken Watanabe's character. The problem with the movie I have structurally are two things. One, there is no character art for our protagonist. None. We, he learns nothing. He achieves nothing. He grows nowhere. Um, right. Two, they because they made it here in the states, and for whatever reasons, you can't have Japanese lead actors in a major American movie. They have two of the same guy. Brian Cranston and Ken Watanabe's character should be the same guy. You know, and their kid should be his kid. And there's just no point to splitting these guys up. They it makes no sense. It's confusing. They throw a ton of exposition at you in the front of the film, which could have been doled out throughout the film if you had a brainy professor protagonist guy that then halfway through the movie transfers his quest to his son to complete, right? And that transference is trying to occur not at the halfway mark. I think it's a little bit closer to the halfway, like right before. Like if you have like five, 50%, it'd be around the 40, 45. He dies a little early and you're like, well, now what? You know, I don't know what's going to happen next. And this guy, this kid, this protagonist goes off and protects everyone else's kids but his own. You know, like there's just a lot of weird things set up in the script that happen because they kind of need to and then yet they don't make any sense. Case in point, the guy is in the military. He's in the Navy and EOD. 
he, he, I kept thinking, why did he have to be a station in the Navy if he's in demolitions? Wouldn't the Army make more sense? Because I was in the Army. I, in fact, I thought he was a member of the Army the whole time. Right, because he I, travels you, with the Army. I'm getting yeah, to that. You're right? telling me that he's in the, in the Navy right now is the first time that I'm coming to this realization. He's, I, he's in the no. Navy. And I've only seen the movie <laughs> once, too. So I was, like, taking mental notes. I figured, well, is it because when he wait? there's a scene where he's a kid. He looks out at the, the nuclear disaster thing going down, which I don't know how that created a tsunami. I just think the building is supposed to be war torn and then and then um he it transfers to him it's that avatar shot right where then oh now he's on the planet i figured he was arriving back in japan in okinawa right okay the marines are stationed i figured he was a marine initially but he's like i'm eod navy and he's in san francisco and i'm like why in san francisco then he has to go to japan if you were stationed in the navy or the marines you'd just be stationed in okinawa he could have already gone and been in japan you know so i don't understand there's just weird well, there's a lot of information there that we don't have. Like, was he born in Japan? If he's born in Japan, he should be an American citizen. But it, it, it's all – I would agree with you. A lot of the human relationships are a little convoluted. They're completely – like, I think this would have worked. This structure would have worked better or easier were it a, broken up into a 13-part television series, you know? Um, Because you would have been able to digest it a little bit longer. But I also believe that fucking one weekend – of sitting around having zero producer influence on a script would have solved this problem too. Wherein the scientist is Japanese and the son is Japanese, maybe half American, half Japanese. His wife could have been American, you know, could just been Japanese father, American mother, right? Mom dies, kid grows up. Now I don't understand this point guys. So the kid grows up, joins the military to do what? He, his father's a scientist. His deceased mother was a scientist. Why did he become a soldier? So he could eventually fight Godzilla. Then why does his father <laughs> say you're running away from things? What kind of All a person right. who runs away from things becomes a demolitions? Do you see what I mean? All right. His, if, what's well, he, he's see, not running then, away from but, anything. But, but... Well, hold on. Maybe it's not necessarily he's running away from things. Maybe he was because his mother died as a scientist and his father was at the time believed to be clearly insane. He was like, no, I'm going to go in completely the opposite direction. I disavow my heritage and I'm going to go be a soldier. However, even that's that's all speculative and assumption. I personally have no problem believing that some kid who grew up in this particular type of household just got a wild hair up his ass and wanted to join the army. Okay. I think it would have made like, sense okay, if he knew. Hold on. That he knew. Right, that something attacked his mother, and he wanted to have the ability to fight it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, look, if we're dealing, we're dealing with simplistic character archetypes here, guys. Whether you know you're adding a lot of complexness that that's not going to come across in the fucking 25 minutes we're trying to display it. So if he's a guy who said, if people knew, hey, some giant monster attacked, but we blew it up, but they didn't actually blow it up. You know what I mean? Like they actually kept it. It could have been like, wow, this thing. There's their giant monsters out there. We haven't seen one ever again. Turns out they've been holding one. He grew up to be a soldier to fight things, you know? Then I, no, well, I, I agree with you. I agree that it's far too coincidental that he happens to be a soldier who is also going to be fighting Godzilla. When, in fact, if you take a look at the movie, every single last plot that the humans come up with to stop these monsters, whatever it is, they all fail every one of they them. They all make it worse. <laughs> yeah. So, like... <laughs> Did we really even have to follow him? Did we have to be attached to this particular kid from the beginning who grew up in Japan? No, no, Not he, really. He, he, and you know as well as me in the military, right? You have a very simple thing. If you're at a duty station, you have to get back to your. Th you just go to a fucking the the the, the people at the airport. Was that the the you know what I mean? The the That's American like... little fucking thing at the airport. They get a hold of your duty station. They fly you somewhere. You don't you don't travel with other branches of military and hitch rides every that's that's the that's the close encounters where Richard Dreyfus is just hitching rides with everyone and sneaking into town and and hanging out with people to get to where he needs to go. Well a little side note, I was talking to Andy Bond, who's a super Godzilla fan, I guess. And he was saying the people the directors of the new Godzilla movie or the people who wrote it are said in an interview they are very influenced by Steven Spielberg. They looked no up to shit. him. Dude, dude. <laughs> Right, the, I'm the, just Cranston's saying. Cranston's character, Cranston's character's last name was Brody because right. they were calling him Brody, right. like the Jaws character, during preliminary, like during uh, uh, pre, and 
they just decided to name him Brody. They were like, fuck it, we're going to write his name Brody. His Joe Brody now, and his son's Ford Brody. Boom. Like, they were heavily influenced by Jaws. And just close in Canada, your... dog. So, look, it's just Spielbergian. And there's even a shot where the little girl turns around and sees the thing, and I was almost waiting for the Jaws vertigo Hitchcock shot. <laughs> You know? <laughs> like do it come on guys do it and they didn't do it but i was like close enough pretty close and when the dog runs down the thing that's classic spielberg you know that's okay so do you think that the people may godzilla on the next go around when they get more licenses to known monsters do you think they can become better directors like spielberg is maybe not as good as him but the, at least the film was directed fine this is a script issue these okay. are character. You the, the the problem when people say, well, I didn't see enough Godzilla. I didn't see the problem is you don't know what what is the point of this guy going around everywhere, w- to save his family. His family was safe. He he did nothing to help them. Right. Yeah, he, like, he didn't design the bomb. Matter of fact, he made the fucking thing worse. You yeah. know what I mean? Like well, if you, you think up, about it, like <laughs> when you bring up points like I didn't see enough of the monster. What in in, in my opinion, and I would believe in in. Robs and correct me if I'm wrong. What's really being said is, I didn't really give a shit about this guy that we're following around. I really yeah. want to see the monster. Right. If I gave more of a shit, I'd be okay with the monster not being there. He could have got crushed. His wife could have got crushed. I would see them in Avengers. I don't care about the kid. There was I had no connection to these characters at yeah. all. Yeah, they so. no per- she didn't help anyone that didn't need to be helped. <laughs> she, uh, right. The she crazy, like the minute they pulled out the, I saw this when they were loading up the missiles, and I was like. If I see a Rube Goldberg machine start, I'm just going to fucking, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to take a sip of my, and I waited. And the minute they had, we had this thing that you lock in here and it's safe from whatever. And I'm like, just take a sip of soda, dude. You know, because it seems that no matter, and no matter what, it, this this always holds true. Hollywood screenwriters, for whatever reason, are just completely oblivious to technology. And this, this is, I mean, zip disks that are going to sit in a spot. In the open air for 20 plus years, bro, and survive. Bro, a zip disks didn't survive three weeks. And I used to use them all the fucking time. Jazz drives, zip drives. It's like th- there was things that he wanted to go to do what? To prove what to who? But then I need this data that we find out then when we're there. I mean, and it happened so quickly in the front of the film. Had Had it been something that occurred at the end of the movie, you know, where he finally came back to that place when he was a kid, then there'd be enough time for me to go, well, you know, you're you're seeing something that's ruined and, you know, what? I, you could bring some closure to this, but it's just a script that doesn't know which way it needs to go. And it only survived, in my opinion, because it was directed well, you know, doesn't mean it's perfect, but it's directed well compared to, say, you know, Pacific Rim, where I'm like, I don't even fucking know what this thing is trying to be like if. Pacific Rim is trying to be Star Wars, and this is trying to be Close Encounters, and neither do it, you know? And to me, the only reason why I can't get behind Pacific Rim is because it... Sucked. Huh? Well, no, it's, it, the, <laughs> I don't know how Guillermo gets away with those caricatures of other people when... And I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, like those aren't Russians, you know? Like, no offense, I got Russian <laughs> friends, they don't find that shit funny. You know, but I guess because we're in America, we can still make fun of Russians all we want, you know. But if you take those Russians and you you set them as super ghetto gangster transformer robots, Michael Bay's a fucking racist. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> like they're, they're just as bad a caricature of Russians as those fucking transformers were of ghetto ass fucking rap culture, you know. Right. And so that's my problem with that movie. Like, I want a human element. Things worked in Pacific Rim, but then things just happen because they need to. And this movie... I just keep thinking, like, wow, at what point, and James, you might know this more than me, at what point do you have something that works and then someone comes in and says it has to be different because they're a producer? Do you understand what I mean, James? You know this happens, right? Yeah, that can happen, I mean, really at any point. Like, I've been on sets before where people just, uh, it's a producer meeting, we're going to have a producer meeting. And then they go in their trailer, and for a half an hour, they're there by themselves. Meanwhile, the director's doing what he's doing, and the crew's doing what they're doing. They're getting the shots that they're scheduled to get for the day. And the producers come out and go, actually, I think we want to reshoot that scene. So, And then the first AD has to worry about finding room for it on the schedule. Do we scrap what we have for the rest of the day to change that scene? Because the producer said so, and they're the ones with the money. So you have to do what they say. 
I mean, it can happen at any point. It can happen at the end when everything is done and the producer goes, you know what? I really wanted to have gotten that. Can we schedule some gorilla shots to go out and, and, and pick up this footage? Like, I, See, yes. I find Pacific Rim to be conceptually flawed. And don't think I'm mean against you, Lermo. Blade 2 and Pan's Labyrinth are some of the best fucking movies in, in my library. I, I enjoy them. I think conceptually Pacific Rim is a flawed film supported by good actors, right? And strong special effects. Uh, Godzilla is is a humanistic film that I don't care about one human, you know? And the only reason why it works is because there are a few people in the movie, like Brian Cranston, you know, that, that despite the shitty fucking script and his ugly wife make it work, like, <laughs> she was as mannish as it gets, bro. I was like, couldn't they get the chick from, remember from Born Identity, the German chick, or, I don't know, somebody, dude, you know, like, what the, like, couldn't they got Kate Capshaw and she lying around somewhere? Like, <laughs> she, <laughs> lying around Spielberg's bed. Um, I don't know, get fucking Anna Gunn. I don't care, make it a fucking Breaking Bad reunion while we're at it. But, I don't know, like, I just don't, I think, when I when I watch Godzilla, it feels like a producer problem, you know? Because no way I can just I just can't believe on God's green earth, James, that these people sat down with a Brian Cranston character and a Ken Watanabe character and, and thought that was going to work from the get. You know what I mean? Uh, to be honest with you, that's I don't know. That's sort of a mystery. Like I I because I know Toho was involved. Toho was advising. Well, that's also appeasing the Japanese time. market. So we got to make sure they're covered too. But you see that that's what I'm trying to say. Like in that case, just make the protagonist Japanese. I, I agree with you. Or half but, Japanese, but, half American. Well, know? in regard to the previous statement that you were making, like uh, uh, regarding you know producers and, and and mucking things up, I don't know how much the producers could have actually mucked things up because it was effectively the Toho cadre that was advising Legendary. So I mean, Legendary had their creative freedom, but only to a degree. If Toho didn't like something, they would they would just veto it. And I think that. To, as the owners of the Godzilla property, now um, you can, Godzilla's been in twenty-eight movies, and the vast majority of the movies do not have a serious tone. The vast majority of the movies are absolute campy schlock. I love every single one of them, but I mean, I, I call them like I see them. But I don't think that I just I don't know, man. I'm having a hard now that you asked the question. Really having a hard time rationalizing that. Like, well, could the producers have? Well, yeah, I guess, but. Because you know they, any screen, I mean, these aren't dumb screenwriters, right? Like they, you. This is a simple character. Like, why would you add two of the same guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, Other James. than well, we can't market it with an Asian guy in the lead, and no fucking producer is going to admit that up front. But that could be the excuse. Or we needed to add someone to have the Japanese quotient who was a hero for the Godzilla who could tell all us Americans how. You know what I mean? Which is an appeasing Toho issue, uh. which they're never going to admit to. Yeah. What, but, what what's uh Brandon you Oh, I was going to say don't you hate when Rob points out something you really like and then makes you start to hate it. <laughs> well, I don't hate <laughs> yeah. it guys. I just like I keep thinking to myself, look, no, I beat my, I have some point I have look, Game Cave is a crazy fucking animated universe, you know, that like but I'm sitting here with my own structural shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean, I do I agree with Brandon? Yes, because you've done it before with me in the past. But <laughs> for this particular film, it's like I still think that it's the best Godzilla since 1954. I still think that it's it's an excellent monster movie. I think that the the humanity going. I, I all agree, but in the as a comparison to Close Encounters, it falls far short. Like, well, okay, okay but I'm not comparing. But it you're to comparing Close it to Encounters. Godzilla movies, right? Just, so then you go, well, it's much better. I don't know what that means. I'm saying that it said it works for what it works with and what it works well with. It then does things that it, it doesn't. Okay. Here's another set of things, guys. I don't understand. <laughs> right? So there are two, right? There are two monsters. Yeah. They're making noises. Now I got the scientist who's tracking down a weird noise coming from somewhere. Right? bring it back to close encounters it's a weird sound i don't know what it means it must it must be a meeting place right okay so we're back in close encounters turns out it's two of these guys and they're meeting one another and they're gonna come across now and they're gonna work hook up in san francisco only problem is chick already is pregnant so before the female monster ever ends up in san francisco she's already got babies so what was the point they didn't have fucking monster nook in the middle of San Francisco, she already had the kid. 
No, I think the point uh, of of the mail was. I mean, he was to he add a flying a, one and to add a tank, guys. Well, this is that's the point. Like, yes, <laughs> but I mean, as far I'm fine with rationalizing it because the male had wings and was mobile, so he's the one that goes out and finds the the, the nuclear food sources to feed. And if they're parasites, eggs. why are they having Mufasa head neck rubs? Well, no, I uh, okay. What was with Stop. the motherly? Hmm, and I bow it. before you, and you curtsy. Stop! Before... You're gonna make me hate it. You're gonna make me hate it. Okay, because if these <laughs> creatures parasites. existed in a, in a primordial Earth where the radiation was far denser than it is today, then why does he even need to fly around to collect nuclear? Not food getting sources? into that. I'm saying that they said they're parasites, which which plays to their character arc. Okay. Let's stop right here before I get really mad. <laughs> I know. I just have Dip to step Rob. away and go. Dip well, <laughs> Godzilla was pretty cool, and it and it did its best to honor Godzilla. So from that, you know, I give it a solid three film out of five. You know, I think three out of five is as best as you're gonna get from me. You know, I give Pacific Rim one point five. Is James flipping his chair right now? No, I'm not flipping my chair. I I still think it's the best Godzilla movie since the original. I, I agree I, with you, James. I don't think it holds a candle to the original. But it doesn't hold a candle to to Close Encounters. Yeah, but again, I'm not I'm not really comparing it to Close Encounters. I mean, I I understand the Come comparison. On, I get it. If the That's guy's not... named after Brody, you know, and it clearly follows the same structure. I mean, you're just taking him on, Rob. Look, James. This is the best part about a discussion is we can all <laughs> say what we think. One of us can like Rumpelstiltskin and the other can fucking like the rain and not give a shit, you know, <laughs> and just completely disregard Rumpelstiltskin for all its Stiltskinness, you know, <laughs> and everything that might imply. So I don't have to waste another 30 minutes talking about it. But I just feel that I'm not talking about the movie it could be. I'm talking about what it is. And I think for what it did, it's a three-star movie. I like Godzilla. I'm more interested in what they'll do with the sequel because I don't know what movie they'll remake next. You know? Like, will they come up with an original story arc or will they then trans... Will it become Independence Day now? Like, no, they already did that with Godzilla 98. That was Independence Day in Jurassic Park. Oh, another Spielberg movie. What Spielberg movie will they take from next? Like, I'm just... <laughs> Could it be just poking War of the, the Bear, War, Rob? Just War the of bear. the Worlds? Could it be? I'm hoping it's Lincoln. Like somehow we elect Godzilla prime minister of the ocean or some shit or global warming. I'm wondering, will Godzilla I'm fight global warming? It's Worm Lincoln, next? really? Huh? I don't know, man. I don't know what world we live in in that universe yet. I'm excited to find out. So. <laughs> um. On the upside, he w the director was hired. We can say this, right, to direct the first Star Wars spinoff movie. So, oh, was he? I didn't know that. Yeah, that was announced today. Oh, cool. So that's I mean, look, that's why I say well directed. I, I I'm shocked. I am a little shocked that Joe Johnston wasn't considered for that, being that he pitched a Boba Fett movie and did direct Captain America pretty well. But uh, Gareth Edwards, you know, not a bad director, so. You guys, any thoughts on that? Um, nope. I uh, I do have a quick little side note that you did mention the screen junkies, which I actually like, and I like Nick Mundy. He's the big, big fat guy on there that yells a lot. Um, I like them. That's a little side note. I like some of their stuff. Uh... Not everything, but I mean, they they have some valid points. Um, I like I like when they, that big fat guy Nick Money just goes off and starts yelling. It reminds me of Rob, where he just goes on a, a you know a tantric of just long spouts. I find him humorous most of the time, but I don't know if I should be taking him seriously. If I'm supposed to take him seriously, I probably wouldn't like him. All right, but you know. Other than that, I'm good. So final verdict on Godzilla. Brandon says seven to eight. James, you say. Uh, I I think it sits comfortably at an eight and a half, and I rate on a five, so I say somewhere around three, which is roughly what you guys give it. So yeah, so we're all we're all in about agreement, you know, on the end result. So James can sleep comfortably, and peacefully. Because <laughs> I would have lost sleep over that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> For goodness sakes! Well, what if they remake Ghostbusters next with Godzilla 2, huh? Uh, uh no. Yeah! Like, and they all have Godzilla's laser blast with proton packs and shit. Man, uh, look. What? <laughs> Look, man, Ghostbusters is When great. the proton packs show up in the trailer and they're halo jumping with them, I just want to know. It's Look, Ghostbusters <laughs> is the greatest comedy ever recorded, ever written, okay? Mm, Don't touch it. Hard I don't tie want between a third that movie. And Big Trouble in Little China, bro. No, no, no. Big Trouble in Little China is excellent. I don't... I'd call that more of an action movie than a comedy. You'd call an action movie where there's no action? There's plenty of action. What happens? He throws a knife. Okay, there, there is the one fight sequence at the end. Dude, there's all kinds of action. There's and, uh, thunder, uh, lightning, and rain. There's, there's a lot the of talking. Wild man. There's, there's. It's all right, magic. I'll give you more action than Ghostbusters. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll say that. But Ghostbusters, like, don't, don't just. I don't even want a third one. Just leave it be. Just leave it be. It was good. It still is good. It's the best. Just leave it be. Godzilla Busters. No. <laughs> Uh, hey, over and under 12 months before we get the Godzilla uh, Battlefield Call of Duty expansion pack. It, it not, not, doesn't have to be called that, but just like the zombies showed up out of nowhere. How long before we get that? Because I believe that's the biggest thing that's going to come out of this, is the next version of... The next big thing other than zombies will be giant kaiju monsters we fight with Halo jumps. Well, they've already segued into it with that Megalodon Easter egg. I don't know if you're aware of that. There's a, there's, you could do something in one of the multiplayer maps that calls up a giant... Make a, it's a prehistoric shark. It just jumps up out of the water and lands. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. So they can, they're like, oh, no, we were working on this. We had a Megalodon. Look, we were just telling people what we were working on. It was, a, it was an Easter egg for future, for the things to come. Fuck you, Activision. <laughs> <laughs> That's a headline right there. Well, we'll definitely get into more game stuff on the next cast. Um, so people know, after this cast is over, the last episode of Game Cave that I recorded with James and... Andy, a couple weeks back, will be attached to this episode because I don't feel like rendering out separate episodes from here on out. So I'm just going to plug it in if you would like to listen to it. We get into Mario Kart, a bunch of other cool stuff. So that'll be in there. Uh, Brandon, do you have any plugs? Anything you want to you add? You can find me on Twitter at Lead Heavy, Instagram at Lead Heavy, and Facebook at Brandon James Art. James Bacon, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at doubleplusgoodgames.com as well as readretro.com. And I'm on Facebook and Twitter under my name, James D. Bacon. And as always, you can find me at Sketchcraft. That's the name of the podcast, Sketch C R E F T. At Facebook, Twitter, Instagrams, YouTubes, Instagram, fucking, I don't know. Everywhere. Everywhere. Just type Sketchcraft into Google and it magically fills up the pages forever and ever. Until then, see you all in two weeks. Bye. is recorded in front of a live internet audience and supported by listeners like you. Please be sure to leave a review on iTunes, like and share our Facebook page, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. All links can be found at sketchcraft.com. That's sketchcraft, C-R-A-F-T, the name of the podcast, dot com. Remember, every little bit counts and it all helps to grow the show. Thanks. Hello everybody, Rob D here. If you're just tuning in to the Game Cave Show for the very first time, why? We've been around a while. 22 episodes! Yay, you should know that we typically begin with what games we have been playing. And the latest in gaming news that I'll post two weeks from now. It's the latest when we talk, right? right. <laughs> Chosen by either ourselves or you, the audience. Also in today is James Bacon, Editor-in-Chief of Double Plus Good Games. And Hello, everyone. Freelance gaming journalist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say hi, James. 
Yeah, hi. Sorry about that. And, and reporting from the firestorm down in L.A., right? Yep, that's yeah. me. Yeah. As well as Andy Bond, retail gaming insider and creator of the indie comic, The Elvatron Chronicles. What's going on, guys? Yo. So, with that said, why don't we start off with uh, Senor Bacon. What have you been playing lately? Well, aside from Facebook games, um, <laughs> Gazillion, a company called Gazillion, who I'd never heard of before I got into Marvel Online or Marvel Heroes, whatever it's called. Um, they've made a Diablo clone that's Marvel. It's it's just all the Marvel characters. Now, it's it's a free-to-play game, meaning you do have to... Well, you don't have to spend money. And I hate, I hate calling something free-to-play. All the money I've spent in this game, I've wanted to spend in this game. You can do everything <laughs> for free in this James game. James loves You get all the everything. heroes for free. <laughs> I do, I do. But it's... I'm, I mean, you know, I get to be Thor, and I get to go jack some Hydra dudes up, you know? Um, How much have you spent on the game so far? Uh, Estimate. Maybe $30, and this is over the course of several months. Don't you think so. for a game of that size and stature, you could have bought the whole game and everything they have to offer for the same price? Yeah. So the only reason why they're they're doing it is because they know they can get probably 90 bucks out of you instead of 30 Oh, sure. I mean, it's, that $30 is not the last $30 that I'll spend on this game. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> It's fun enough. Um, like I said, it's a Diablo clone. You run around. It's you got the same isometric view, um, and you can be Thor or even obs more obscure heroes like Black Panther. Uh, you got Black. Well, most of the Avengers, most of the X Men. Um, they're going to add villains at some point or another. But it's it's fun. You just run around, and and it's unlike Diablo, where you have five classes, and each class is good at doing one thing. All of these, all of the characters' moves are predicated upon who they are in the comic books. And they all feel God, like they should. Go ahead. And Thor is very, you know, he's a brutal melee character. And he, he can throw his hammer if you want him to. He can just punch things with his hammer. Wh whatever you want him to do, he can do. Um, within, you know, the, the context of who he is and who we have come to expect him to be. And... It's just been real fun. They, they listen to, because I actually played the beta, and it was awful. Um, but they've listened to the community. They continue to listen to the community. Um, they, they constantly do player polls regarding what new characters they would like to see. Now, wasn't this made by guys that used to work at Blizzard North? I'm not looking at I Google. I'm just saying, I, if, I, if I remember correctly, you know, like if I remember. I wouldn't correctly. be surprised at all, because the, it, it plays identically to Diablo, Diablo 2. Um, and I, I just, I'm, I'm, I get a kick out of it. You know what I mean? Each, like, if I'm playing Thor and someone else is, the, I keep saying Thor because he's the one that I've played most recently, and someone else is playing, like, the Hawkeye, there's banter that our characters will have with one another just for passing. Like, you know, Thor will say, uh, you know, keep on keeping on, Noble Archer, or whatever he says, and... You know, Hawkeye will talk to Black Widow, or Spider-Man will talk to whoever Spider-Man talks to. I don't know. Um, so there's that. It's sort of, you know, it's it's sort of enlivens the world with the Marvel characters and their personalities. But it's just a collectathon. It's just a bunch of loot grabbing that always seems to to be successful. And you're I'm, hooked, right? I'm totally hooked. Like I said, I spent thirty bucks on the game. It's not the last thirty dollars I'm going to. Could it spend. be you're hooked because it's Marvel? Oh, for for heck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you won't it's play Path of, I, of Exile, but you'll play... Well, right, I could be a witch in Path of Exile, but I can be the Scarlet Witch in Marvel <laughs> Heroes. <laughs> I always knew Bacon wanted to be a woman. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I pitched this in the in the first issue, and they laughed at me, but it's true. <laughs> he wants to be Scarlet Witch. You want to be Arizona Power... No, I don't want to get into it. Power Bacon. So, Andy, what what have you been playing lately? <clears throat> Uh, the Mario Golf demo, which is fun. I can, you know, the game comes out Friday, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, Child of Light, which I thought was originally, because I didn't pay too much attention to it, so I thought it was an indie game, and I got really excited about it, and then when I purchased it, I saw that Ubisoft made it, which excited me even more. So it's, uh, it's beautifully done. It's It looks so nice, and it plays, uh, you know, like a, a JRPG. You have your turn-based but they're mixing it up a little bit, which is pretty cool. You use this um, 
like a Firefly character that you meet, and you just use uh, one of the uh, joysticks over the villains, and you can bright, you know, turn on your brightness, which you know, with for a Firefly, and it blinds them, so it kind of slows their turn down a little bit and lets you maybe get two or three turns in before they can attack you once, which is pretty cool. Nice. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I remember watching the demo, and I was like, it looks pretty, but I don't know, like the rhyming thing, it, it, and I kind of fell asleep, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm not saying it's right. that game, but for, and not that I'm, I'm an action fiend, you know, I like Valkyrie Chronicles, you know what I mean? Right. I like, uh, I haven't played Nino Kuni, it's not exactly the most, you know, action-packed game ever, but, uh, but I don't know, like, for me, it just felt like, there's something about Ubisoft, and I'm not going to say because of, like, Watch Dogs. Like, like even Rayman. Rayman's a beautiful game, you know? But for some right. reason, collecting bugs just never had the same wow factor for me as coins. For some reason, you know? Like, I don't, I can't explain why I didn't have as much fun with the Rayman games, even though, even though there's parts of it. But the Child of Light, I, don't, I think, like, that's a game that, if they make a sequel, will probably be ten times even better. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it almost feels like they they figured they kind of cracked the first game a bit, but I think the real soul of it can kind of like if they get a chance to do another one, hopefully. But yeah, I mean, but if you, if you haven't played the played the demo yet, I mean, to anybody, definitely pick it up, try it out. So yeah, most definitely Mario Golf, more of the same, right? Uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, what I really like about Mario Golf and you know, this is in the demo, but just articles that I've read is that when you do multiplayer, so the state of the three of us were playing, we can all play at the same time instead of waiting, kind of like on uh, Wii U Golf, how you wait for, your, for each turn. You could play your hole right there. That way it kind of speeds up the, the game a little bit. So it's cool. I like it. I mean, I haven't played it in freaking forever. So, well, I don't even remember when the last Mario Golf came out. Uh, the last that. Mario Golf I played was on the GameCube. I yeah, say. yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was. It's been a. It's been a minute. Yeah, I mean I loved uh, Mario Golf and tennis on the 64. You know, at the time when it came out. But um, I like Camelot. I wish they'd just make another damn fucking Cam uh Dark Sun Golden Sun game. You know. Uh, um, yeah. So I mean, what are they working on now? Is it Mario? The same guys who do <laughs> they're probably making Dragon Ball Z games or some shit like that. Like, there's something they do to pay the bills that we don't play over here. Like, maybe a horse trainer racing game or something, you know? Like farm, farm simulator. Something that we don't yeah. play oh, over Well, here. I mean, they're coming out with another uh, Dragon Quest. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll bring out another Golden Sun. I would like to see that. But, you know, I'm not... I'm not you know, get my hopes up too much over Camelot, but that's cool. Yeah, I uh, it's been a slow time for games, right? Like Mario Kart's right around the corner, and we're you know like in March, May. The, the Titanfall came out, but I'm not really a third-person shooter dude, so. Um. Well, did did you uh see what you're getting a free game with Mario Kart now? Yeah, yeah, that? yeah, yeah. We'll get into that topics in one second. So, yeah. so I've been playing Nino Kuni. I mm -hmm. uh, went back, started through that again. Uh, but this time I have those, uh, I have one of those 3D TVs, right? And it has this faux 3D setting you can do, and it sort of like makes some 3D effects. And uh, I found it works surprisingly well on Nino Kuni. Like, the menus can look a little weird sometimes, but other than that, like, it actually adds something to the game that I was uh, rather impressed by. That's just a game that it just takes forever to start, you know? Like, it just creeps along. Like eight hour tutorial kind of takes forever. Yeah, that. like I mean, it's fine. It's a beautiful world, you know. You're definitely in a Ghibli, you know, universe. It's interactive. It's just that, like with Porco Rosso or any of those games, those movies start and finish quickly, you know. And so this really just takes that long storybook approach, opening to a game. And I, I still prefer the Final Fantasy tactics of like, oh, I could just die. A hundred times the first time I play this game, you know, <laughs> like, like a game that just kind of throws it at me a little bit. But um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this one up. Finally, now that I finished Grand Theft Auto V, I'm just going through the backlog right now. Uh, and then waiting for Mario Kart 8. You know, I went back and played some of that Mario Kart Arcade because I just wanted to see Mario Kart in HD. And uh, it's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. But yeah, they're giving away. Let's get into the topic, so we could jump right into that. So Nintendo's giving away a game if you purchase Mario Kart 8. Now that that says we got nothing coming out soon, right? Like, 
<laughs> Can you remember the, they they didn't really like giving away games when you bought a system. You know, like I can't remember the time Nintendo gave you a game when you bought a game brand new. Can Did anybody? They? No. Now, were they were they maybe the first ones also to pull that? Like they I think the Nintendo 64 wasn't that the first system to release without a pack in. You had to buy Mario along with it. I could be mistaken, but that's maybe how I, one I, of those Philips CDI things. But out of them and Sega, you know what? I, like I, I, yeah. I imagine. I think the first Turbo Graphics had nothing, and Bonk took off, and they would pack in Bonk or something. But yeah, the, the, the 64 was the first time Nintendo didn't uh, ship with something. The first, no, the Genesis didn't have a game originally. Like I think that's. Oh, uh, you know what? That. You're right. You're right. Yeah, but they, but that's because they had Altered Beast, and you know that's a game you love to talk about. You know who cares when you play? Um. But yeah, so but to get, I go and I buy a sixty dollar piece of software and I get another piece of software on the digital for free. That's crazy. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna complain, right, guys? Like, free games, free game. Uh, but for Nintendo, that that's saying a lot for them, I think. And, and the only thing I had to complain about was out of that whole list, there was only one game I don't have already. So I was, What's I was on the list? really I close. Was on the list. Uh, you were picking up Zelda Wii U, uh, Pikmin Three. Uh, Wii U Party. Um, what was the other ones? I mean, I have them. I can look right on my shelf. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was like one more. There's like five games you can choose from, but uh, Wii Party U is the only one that I didn't own already. So I was kind of close to having that pretty much useless to me. Yeah, now I wish I didn't buy that Zelda game. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was like, damn it. Damn. Well, I rebought my Wii U just so I can get that bundle. I wanted that special controller or tablet, whatever. Controller. Wait, did you so do you get two game pads now, or is that a game pad and a Wii Um, for Mario Kart or Zelda? No, there was a pack and that had an extra controller. That's why I was asking. Like, it's oh, a Wii um, right? So when I for the Zelda one, it, it all it came with was the uh, game pad that had the Zelda, you know, decorations on it. For Mario, you're getting the game pad and the Wii remote. From Mario Kart. Gotcha. And that spiffy wheel accessory. Yeah, you're cutting in a little out right now. I'm not gonna restart the stream. Just sorry, folks. You know what I mean? Like it's it's sometimes it's not every time. So I don't know. You got you do you got any uh, just quick question? Do you have anything running in the background, Andy? No. Internet Explorer. Nope. I can actually hear him fine without. You cutting. can. Yeah. Okay, as long as you can hear him fine, then sometimes. But I don't know, guys. I mean, sometimes whatever. Let's move on. So, Andy. Uh, let's just get a quick Nintendo rundown, right? What's your feelings right now about Nintendo? Just... Um, they're having questionable, uh, you know, moves on the playing field, but I'm excited for what's coming up as far as the games go for both Wii U and 3DS, and this whole rumor about a new hardware, I'm unsure of, and that may be the, just a rumor. The Wii Fit system, right? Like... The health is, is that system. what that is? It's going to be a... Uh, yeah, the, the, they, this is what they talked about before in the Nintendo Direct. They're, the new system they're talking about will be the Walgreens Wii Fit. The Wii Fit U or whatever you want to call it. Like, it'll be a health-based game system for older people. You know, which says to me that they... You know, when we when the, the system first launched, I, we had a conversation about this. And the gist was that Nintendo is sort of stuck. They're trying to cater to hardcore and family. And that makes no sense. You know, like, they're trying to put the Wii and all the family stuff and then also we got graphics and hardcore gamer and the Wii Fit thing like was was a sort of a fad so I just don't see the the grandmas who bought a Wii ever buy, buying another system again you know what I mean like like the people yeah. who, who bought all the Wiis those are people Andy you have a mom you know what I mean most parents they just were like you got, you got a game system you're like that was a Nintendo it, it's Nintendo 64 it's the game system it's the same thing like you know like yeah. they, they buy one system for life these people that's what my, my mom was doing when I was growing up like I bought you a Playstation uh, come on I, the Playstation 2 is out but you no I'm not buying you another one so yeah I can see where the families are going to go especially with the older people they probably don't, don't even remember what a Wii is you know what I mean why would they buy a Wii U yeah, so the, I think the we fit the the health initiative thing is uh, what they're gonna do. I don't. It doesn't excite me. You know, I'm not saying it's bad business for them. As a gamer, I just could care less. James, you well, got an you, opinion on this? Like, uh, it's I, I I go through cycles with Nintendo, and it's the same cycle. It's like I'm I'm the Sonic fan, but with Nintendo. You know what I mean? 
they get me hopeful, I defend them, the new thing comes out, I get upset, and this is just, if, if this is true, it, I am not surprised by it, nor am I impressed, and it sort of makes me want to start slapping people who make decisions at Nintendo. Um, because much like you said, I, I interpret those that, that quote-unquote casual market, the market that Nintendo went after with the Wii, uh, they, they don't need another system. Or at least they don't think they need another system. It's going to take, you know, you're going to have to move the world to convince them otherwise. I mean, most of them, like the grandmothers and the mothers, got it for Wii Fit. And you can Wii Fit from now until the end of forever, and you don't need another system for it. And it doesn't matter what new features you introduce. It doesn't matter what you call the system. They are fine with what they have if it's not in the closet at this point. So I, it's a questionable move. I don't understand where they're coming from. Now, I know I don't have the market uh, in information that they do, but like I, in this particular situation, I, I don't necessarily think I need it. It just seems like they've missed the point. You know? Well, they like see that I, the hard... Sorry. No, no, no. I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Uh, it's like they seem like the hardcore audience is now on the 3DS, so they can, can kind of do whatever they want for family-wise for the console, the home console, and it's... I don't think it's the right way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't, I don't. Here's the thing: they're already stuck in. They've admitted to being stuck in the HD development hell, right? So where you, unforeseen difficulties and HD pipelines, whatever. The the same issue everyone complained about when they went to 360, which they're having on the Wii U, and so now they're going to add more software development, right? for something completely unrelated. It can't, can't possibly make the games come out any faster. You know, so like, when Smash Brothers on the Wii U got pushed to Christmas, I'm like, we're in it for the long... This will be... This is going to be... I bet you we will have less than than the 300 games. That's why I wrote down the thing. Like, the Nintendo 64 only had 296 games released in North America when it came out. Did you right. see that? Kotaku ran a picture of Some guy laid them all out on the floor. That's why he said Nintendo 64's game catalogs was 296 games in the United States. Come over the PlayStation's 1,000. You know, like, and that's why, you know, yeah, you know, they, the carts, they went to the carts because the whole thing was Sony, but that cost them a lot of money, you know, and market leadership. And Nintendo has Nintendo games, but three systems, has any console company ever launched three systems simultaneously and made it? guys like no 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 it's never happened and i can't i love nintendo but and i defended the Wii. i was like man i mean it's awesome but they can't run three systems simultaneously you know i'm gonna be upset if more fitness games come out for that walgreens thing than games for the wii u for us you know that's gonna be you kind of like a sticking it to everybody as far as the fan base goes if you're moving all your focus that way with, you know. Yeah, but if us. it does happen, I mean, would you be surprised? It really seems like Nintendo is in a... They've been in a panic mode for a while. They drop new technology, see how well it sells on to the next thing. They drop new technology, see how it sells on to the next thing. They're, I mean, yeah, okay, I get it. They have a bajillion dollars in the bank. But that doesn't mean they're not panicking. Yeah, and, but it's a business. Like Oh, oh absolutely. And they're not like, well, we're proving, you know the world right like google didn't make a profit for you know they got subsidized they're not getting subsidized by a government or you know like they're not building anything that's ne a giant social platform they're nintendo they make nintendo stuff for nintendo and i don't really think they're in the games business anymore you know like the wii changed them from games to hardware and peripherals big time guys like you know like when the super scope 6 tanked they didn't keep fucking making super scope 6 games and shit you know like they didn't keep trying to prove we'll prove this is right yeah yeah they came out with the uh, you know the mario paint and whatever but these these kind of came and went you know what i mean like now it's like they're like we the only reason why you can't use a gamepad on the wii u is because they make a lot of money on those wii controllers you know and they're going to continue making money on those wii controllers and they lose money when they make a, a controller with the screen in it it's that simple you know, like, it's no more complicated than that. That's why they're not because we want you to feel and get the fuck all that. You know, like, if they could get a, if they could get you to spend 80 bucks on a Wii U pad and they were going to make, you know, 
$78 profit, then they, that system would run four game pads as it stands, you know? But it costs them money, so they don't. But um, I, that, I'm just, I'm with you. Like, I don't want to see Nintendo go away, you know? But it can happen, guys. <laughs> like, like, it can, you know? And, um, or they could just turn into something that I'm not engaged in anymore, right? Like, they yeah. could just become the Walgreens company, you know? And that's, <laughs> it's going to suck so bad just because Nintendo is what got me into games. You know, I played the NES Zelda. That's what made me fall in love with games. And to see that, what got me into it, go off to the the wayside, it's going to be heartbreaking. Unless they change their leadership, I think. I think a lot of it has to do with that. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay, James, you pick a topic. Let's go. Um, let's talk about... Today, James. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm underprepared. I like I'm them all. They're all well, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, 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 my Talk about apologies. Dragon Age. Yeah, I'll pick one for you. Okay. I'll tell you what. Dragon Age is a great topic. <laughs> um, what do you want to say about Dragon Age? You don't even know anything about Dragon Age. No, 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 no. no, no. I know, You've no, never no, no. Even I've seen the, the videos. I've, I'm, I'm current. I've heard Dragon. of this Age of Dragons you speak of. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, dragons. It's, it's, it, look, <laughs> it's one of those things that I am really kind of. It's funny you pick the topic, and and it's something that I kind of am, I'm a little hesitant to, to comment on, only because you get free games. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I actually, and and you said that right before I'm gonna make this. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> I actually liked Dragon Age too. I know. I liked it like, as well. I, uh. I I understood. The reuse of asset <laughs> yeah. complaints. I understood all that stuff, but when all was said and done, the story was more local, which gave the characters far more capacity to just flourish within the setting. And the stakes were still high. By the end of the game, the world had changed. The whole world of Tamriel had changed by the end of the game. But it was still that local story. And I get it. Reuse of assets sucks. Walking into a cave and seeing the same thing over and over again is awful. It was a bad design decision, especially for how but, long it took him to but, get this but, game out. But, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I liked it because I like everything. Um, so I, I'm very much looking forward to this new game. In what way? Like, well, how does it look different? Like, does it, it, does it look like a Baldur's Gate? in third person mode you know that what i don't understand like what about because i don't get gra dragon i get elder scrolls and skyrim guys i mean even though i think the player models are fugly as shit and i have to have mods to play any elder scrolls game um i don't get dragon age you know what i mean like i don't get it it's the story I yeah mean, it, it really is the story the first one i had a very difficult time getting into but when i finally got into it and i finally beat it it was worthwhile. The second one to me was just, it was about a family and it was about their struggles. And it was, it, it really had, and you know, EA and Bioware, they sell it like it's a continuation. It's not, it's a completely different game and a completely different story, which is probably why I prefer that to the first game. I hated the fade in the first game. I really hated the fade in the first game. I'd get all the way up to the mage tower and I played the game through several times. I get all the way up to the Mage Tower and then just let it sit for a couple months because I just didn't want to go through the fade. So the second game didn't have any of that. It removed what I didn't like, and, and it had that more local story. It was about a family. It was more human. You were there. Not only were you, you know, privy to their struggles, their very human struggles, but you were also contributing to them via the choices that you made, the dialogue paths. Um, and this one, this game, it... It kind of like, I don't know, it blows things back out again. So as much as I'm looking forward to it, it's you're like, talking nonsense, a... James. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, James, you're talking nonsense. You're talking it's, like, it's like it's, listening it's... to someone describe the fucking prequels. You know what I mean? And then there's heroes and there's <laughs> destinies and there's these things going on. The reality is it's well, just a lot of blowhard stuff. world building, you know, and gameplay that's lackluster. But you're telling me it's a great story. I, I, I hear The Witcher is an interesting story, you know? Okay. But it's fun to play. Like, yeah. You're right. There's no, no fun right. in Dragon Age, guys. I don't get it. You know, I, I never got Ultima. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm in that crowd. And you know what I love about James? 
James, you're in a crowd that I understand, even though I completely disagree with you about this, this series. I understand. I was the guy who, who told everyone in the army that Bushido Blade was a really tactical fighting game if you followed the rules and it was Kendo Warrior, black and white. But the reality is you just close your eyes and hit a button and you're going to kill people. You know, <laughs> it's one hit kill, man. <laughs> yeah. Unless you both adhere to the code of the sword and you put a lot more in that game than those developers, you know, put into it themselves. Then, you, you know what I mean, guys? It's like diminishing returns. It's just, it's just watch a company spend another 100 mil, in my opinion. For, and is the Frostbite engine that great these days? Like, are we really... I mean, is it? It's still like a 360 engine, right? It's not like a PS4, X, you know, Xbox One, next gen. So it's not Unreal 4, is it? It's like Frostbite, right? So we're talking. Yeah, it's Frostbite 3, I think. So that's 360 tech. You know what I mean? That's like Christ Tech Crisis 3. Fine, but I mean, it's so you know. To me, it's just the snow looks sharp. You know, like <laughs> some sharp looking snow. Um, I don't know. Like Andy. You guys are welcome to like it. I, I want to like Dragon Age. Oh, I'm going to love it. You know. That's where I'm at. I'm super excited about this game. And it is the story. It, the story makes the characters, you know, and where most games, the characters drive the story. It's just, it's going to be good. I don't, it's, when I saw that you didn't like it, I was, I, I was trying to figure it out and I couldn't. Well, you know, there's this thing, right? I, I love a sense of fun and humor and I don't like I like realism if if it feels like it's earned. I don't like people that just brood and tell me how dark and dreary a world is. Case in point, there's this movie that came out a year or two ago, and it was like some about angels invading the earth, and some elderly woman's like, I'm going to kill you, you little bitch. And my buddy's like, doesn't it look cool? I'm like, no, it looks like a generic fucking 90s made for sci fi movie. Man, I don't. Yeah, I you know, know like, I get what about. you're trying to do. This is heavy handed exposition, and heavy handed exposition. I like Game of Thrones not because of the sex and violence. That's the least interesting part. It's watching, you know, the little Lannister guy, Tyrell, you know, walk around and survive, you know, the, the crazy shit, you know? <laughs> like, it's these characters that that I care about. And I, I guess it's like Assassin's Creed. Like, I can't – it's hard for me to wait four hours to care, you know? And, like, you know, Cooney's in the same thing. Like, I'm like, guys, you know, like – the, 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 it's taking forever here, you know, and I just believe there's a quicker way. I believe there's a quicker way, and games like Half Life Two prove that to me that you could come in the line. I like Gordon Freeman. I've never heard the guy speak, you know. So, like, so I don't know, man. Let's just move on. Uh, I'll pick something. Street Fighter Assassin's Fist is coming. Anyone watch these trailers? I've not watched the trailers, but they're all over my Facebook feed. Yeah, I watched them earlier today. They so, look interesting. So if anyone doesn't know what this is, back in 2010, some guys did a fan trailer or whatever for a Street Fighter thing, and they got in with Machinima or Capcom or however it worked out, and four years later, we end up with the web series Street Fighter Assassin's Fist. A lot of people are saying, well, it looks better than the movie, and that's true. However, it looks like a TV show, and like, I'm fine with it. Like, I think the posters look good, the, move, the, the, the stuff looks fine, but it looks fine in the way Arrow's fine. You know, if I put Arrow next to the Dark Knight, well, you know, <laughs> like, like I, I don't, but I don't think Street Fighter live action should be compared to that. I think this will be a fun, you know, fun, and it won't have Laurel or any of those other cats from Arrow running around janking it up. But um, but I think it looks pretty cool, and and they actually make the big eyebrows work. If, if I couldn't believe it, you know, like, and re reuse, he's Japanese, <laughs> like that's nice. You know, and Ken's uh, American, and I, I thought it looked pretty good for what it was. Far better than any of the movies or whatever. So. How does it, and again, I haven't seen the trailer, but how does it look compared to the uh, the Mortal Kombat web it's, series? Well, that they that. I, I oh, is it? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, you can't, like, there's no way you can fake, you, you know, you can tell when something is shot, you know, you don't have a DP, you don't have, you know, maybe they got, maybe, yeah. maybe got 100,000 to do this thing. But it's still pretty good. The lighting's fine. The choreography looks pretty good so far. I don't think the jokes are a hundred percent there, but in the same way that, like, I, I I give Arrow credit to like the choreography in the show, and that you know for a TV show they because they don't have a giant budget, they're keeping it real with the fights, you know, which I'm fine with. I like that as opposed to crazy kung fu guy. So I don't know. I think this looks pretty good, all things considered. And uh, I don't think it needs to look a, like a movie. I think it could just look like a well-made show and happen to be Street Fighter, and it works for me. So. 
Do you guys have anything to say? Um, it lo looks nice, but I probably won't watch it just because I have a hard time watching uh, web series in general. Oh, well, I'll, I'll definitely watch it. I mean, especially based on your qualifier that it's, it looks better than the Mortal Kombat one. I actually really enjoy the Mortal Kombat one. And most of the media I consume is on the internet anyway, so whatever. You know, it's not like a, a big deal. It's not on TV for me. Um, so I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll see what it's about. In fact, I'll probably, as soon as we're done recording, I'll go watch that trailer. James? Yeah? Hello. Did I cut out? You're really no. low. Andy? Hold on yeah, It's second. on your side. Yeah. Yep. You there? Yeah. Okay, crazy. All right, I got it. Wow, we're having all sorts of technical issues today. <sighs> all right, so let's move on. So Destiny, you guys been following any of this stuff? A little uh, bit. I care not for Destiny, just yes. like I care not for Titanfall. <laughs> Andy? <laughs> Destiny he had uh, had a moment where I think it was going to be cool, but working in the retail, I'm kind of burnt out on it already. Boring. So, Boring yeah. is the word I have for that game. And I'm being told, you know, from some people I have that live up near Bellevue and, you know, they, they do a lot of Q&A stuff. So like, well, actually, you know, Rob, it's pretty good and no, no, no. And I'm like, guys, they, I don't know, man. Like, there's no antagonist in this game, right? The idea is you just got giant areas. And I remember when they showed off the game, they had this concept art of a spaceship next to a, like a, a tomb that had gold in it. And I was like, that's awesome, right? Spaceships and, and treasure and medieval stuff mixed together. That's cool. Load up the game. Hey, it's Halo. You know, <laughs> I don't see any of that. It's like Halo with MMO. So that's exactly how I feel about it. And I'm a. I love Halo. I love the universe. I like Master Chief and Cortana. But this game is just like whatever. I I just I don't care. Just like I didn't care about Titanfall. It's just there's this first person shooter glut that's been going on for years now and I don't care how many big robots you add I don't care how many people are on screen I don't care how big the multiplayer maps are it's just a first person shooter and most of them are mediocre at that like I am one of the people who doesn't really champion Borderlands because it's just a mediocre first person shooter Gearbox entire catalog is full of mediocre first person shooters just like a lot of the other people out there who do first-person shooters, I'm just I'm I'm over it. I don't care. I don't care if it's sci-fi. I don't care if it's you know real-world sim uh, with with war. I, I I don't care. And you know whatever. Yell at me for that. Whatever. I so lean a little bit on your end too. I mean, the last game that I played that was a first-person shooter that I've ever really really liked was Far Cry 3. Other than that, I just they can pass right past me, right by me, and I don't care. I've been getting more into the first-person exploration game genre, like Gone Home, you know, and I would tell you I was playing Nathan's. It's all those games that I'm told that I don't know what I'm talking about. They're not real games. But, you know, three or four years from now when <laughs> VR takes off, and, you know, like, it'll evolve into a genre. <laughs> look, I, people thought I was nuts because I liked Star Fox back in the day, even though it didn't have textures and it just looked like a bunch of weird shapes flying around. My friends didn't – I don't know, man. But in terms of first-person shooters, I put this in the, the fuse and haze category, you know? Like, okay, looks pretty, but so what? They're expecting subscription, right? Wait, they're selling it as a service? Yeah. What? Did they'll that just change? This, they'll be playing this game for 10 years, you know? Like, and you'll update, uh, they'll have expansion packs, and yeah. Are you kidding me? No. That's infuriating. No. That's Oh, that's infuriating for... So many complicated reasons that I'm sure we don't have time to go into so right now. So if they actually made an MMO, but they don't want to say that because, you know, that comes with connotation. They have to have blown somewhere between 100 and $300 million on this, right? Like, an, an, an ins like, they had to cash in all the bungee chips, basically. Because you know to make an MMO, you got to be willing to just throw away 150 mil, minimum. I thought it was going along the ways with um, Guild Wars. Where you just bought the expansions, or, or did they add the subscription fee? Yeah, but Guild Wars is still an MMO style. You have to have the infrastructure. I mean, at least that was set up with, initially it was with those portals you jump around, so it's almost like a shared network. But right. this you log on to their servers, it's a persistent world. They built an MMO. However they decide to charge you for it or figure out a payment structure, they built an MMO. And so if they have a network you log on to, 
you play on a server that devs are going to be running around with you, and they expect you to be playing it for 10 years. What game? What game have we been playing for 10 years, guys? <laughs> no, game, no cause... game, and that's that's why it's. Oh, a... that's not true. That's not true. Wow. There's there's two uh, games that I wow. know. Wow. <laughs> Wow is the only game, guys. Like, I was thinking specifically consoles. And EverQuest. Right. EverQuest, right? But it's infuriating because, like, they took a look at the last console cycle, and they went, okay, well, how can we maximize our profits over... And then they're trying to sell us some sort of slipshod, fly-by-night, quote-unquote, service in a hack-night first-person... Oh. Says the guy who's playing free to play Disney and so games, dude. stupid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's this kind of anti consumer bullshit but, but, that really gets my hackles up, man. I just can't handle like, uh, and then people start to champion it like it's actually worth something. It's not. It's it, uh, see, yeah. I, so, so you I'm absolutely you, flabbergasted and completely pissed off that this so is so you buy the game. You'll buy these expansions, but what we're really talking about, you know, is that you're buying like a, a setup, you know, it, it's microtransactions and microtransactions in any form are really going to like at some point someone it's ne going to be the next Grand Theft Auto, in my opinion. You know, someone's going to regulate this stuff because at what point do you. Yeah, I guess we all could go to the movie theater and every five minutes have to drop in a few more quarters to watch the remainder of Captain America. You know, if you want to see the trailer at the end of the movie, you know, the, 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 the what do they call it, the bull shot or whatever they call that, the, the thing at the end, the tease. The you stinger? Know, you, yeah, the stinger. Right. You can play, you can pay a few, and get an extra few minutes, you know, more in this theater. Like, but in, for some reason with games, we get away with this, and we all, like, that that's serviceable. I understand some kind of pay structure when you're an independent studio, you know, and you're trying to find a way to make it, but these are guys with millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And I just don't think, at, at the end of the day, a first-person MMO is going to work in this industry. You know, like I just don't think it's going to cut it. That's my opinion. You know? And I, I think it's sad that it's Bungie, of all people. You know, like, damn, I like them. You know, they bought themselves back from Microsoft. I was impressed. But I really wish they had just gone and, I don't know, done something not an MMO. You know, it's almost like they let Dave Halverson in charge. And, <laughs> made the most craziest <laughs> thing ever. Because what are you going to do? You're going to run around. At, at what point in a, in a, in a, in a three, 3D world does it just get boring walking around? Right? Like, hey, there's more stuff that way. Man, you know? how are they go Yeah, how are they going to deal with traversal? Like, if this is supposed to be so big and it's first Ships. person, like... Just, <sighs> just keep flying. You know? It's fun. Fly. Ugh. I don't know. Uh, anything else you guys want to bring up? You got, uh, the new Dragon Quest is in development. You guys uh, into Dragon Quest? I am. That um, was very exciting to learn, actually. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. that's cool. I like seeing more J, you know, RPGs coming on over here, but I haven't had a, a chance to play those at all. Dragon Quest VIII is awesome. I, I recommend if you have PlayStation 2 emulation, to crank it up to 1080p. So it's a classic series. Yeah, that's coming out. And then, obviously, Blizzard. They seem to be doing better. Crazy as that seems. Hearthstone actually got nines and tens. James, you play that, right? Yeah, it's, it's a really good... Uh, it's a fun little card game. Um, it's It doesn't occupy a great deal of my time, but, you know, hey, I'm in the middle of cooking dinner or boiling water. Hey, I got time for a game or two. And you play a game, and it's it's fun, and the mechanics are solid. It's not as complicated as Magic, but I think that, that works as a strength because a lot more people can play it which means a lot more people can spend money on the microtransactions. Um, but that's another game where, like, you only have to spend money if you want to. You don't... You, you, all the cards you can get for free, you can, you know, make specific cards for free so you're not thrown to the random number generator like it's, you know, a pack of wolves. And it's fun, you have... It's all nameless and faceless nonsense. So it's, you know... Did they say when they're bringing it over to the iPhone or anything like that? Uh, it's already on the iPad, and that was a surprise announcement, I think, two weeks ago. Um, I don't know if it's coming to the iPhone, and they do have plans for Android. They just haven't said when in typical Blizzard fashion. But it, they, they are planning on making the rounds to all of the, the major smartphone platforms, I think. Well, the last thing I wanted to bring up was this whole 
Oculus Rift Zenimax issue. Is uh, you guys aware of this? I no. saw the article header today, but I didn't read it. So basically, Zenimax, right? Uh, Id, whatever. Zenimax, yeah. parent company of it. Uh, John Carmack, as we all know, was working there for the longest time. Finally left to go work at Oculus VR. He'd been working on VR uh, at at it or whatever, and then Zenimax just announced that they're suing him for infringing pat patents or copyright or patent or proprietary technology that he developed when he was a Zenimax employee. Well, that's convoluted as hell. Who knows how long that's going to last? Yeah. So someone saw two billion and was like, you know, like, you know, we're yeah. working on that here. I think we could get him. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's the sort of thing that's like, well, prove that he wasn't working on it while he was here. Uh. But I mean, what does that mean? I was, wor I mean, unless you have specific code, that's like, hey, we, uh, we know you worked on platformers. You come make a platformer over here. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like how, this seems yeah, to me. Yeah, but what it, what it could do is like, it could tie up the Oculus Rift coming to market because the court, they could put a court order hold on releasing the technology for public consumption because if it's not theirs, then they have no rights to make money on it, which means it's, it's just, it's going to be a convoluted, years-long mess, I guarantee it. And that's why Zenimax did it, to, to just make a mess of it, which is a shame. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want the goddamn Oculus Rift, you know? And it seems every company out there, it's almost like sharks smell the blood in the water, you know? Mm-hmm. And they all want a piece of the pie. And it's like, it's just too, it's too delicate to even carve up yet, the pie. Like, just let it breathe for a bit here. So, yeah, it's disheartening. I, at the very least, just because it's just negative press that doesn't need to be out there, you know? As far as I'm concerned. So that's about it. You guys got anything else you want to you wanna bring up? Andy, you got anything? Uh, no, I mean, it's kind of Slow. Dead, dead as far <laughs> as games go. Yeah, I mean, we've already talked about everything. You know, we got Dragon Age and Mario Kart and... Watch Dogs, and now we're just waiting for them to come out. It's the dead time. I yeah, know, if, if it doesn't pick up in two weeks, then we'll just we'll skip a week or so, because, I mean, there really is nothing. You know, like, when the big talk of the town is in the NES Remix 2, I just drop the microphone and walk out the room, you know? Like, <laughs> I, I'm like, fun, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, that's... Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got Portal Mario right now on my TV I can go play if I really want some crazy Mario remix <laughs> action, you know. Portal Mario is funny. You guys ever play that? No, no. I've, I've watched people play it, though. It's It seems real fun. It's crazy, and it's awesome to play Mario, Super Mario Brothers in, in widescreen, you know, with a portal gun. So. All right, uh, James, where can people find you on the Internet? They can find me at doubleplusgoodgames.com as well as readretro.com. Sweet. Andy, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter under Elvatron, E-L-V-A-T-R-O-N. You can also find me on Facebook at the name is Bon, Andy Bon. Awesome. Oh, before I forget, Andy, uh, I, uh, something that I thought you should maybe on the Castle of the Night is give us the uh, lowdown what's going on in the, the retail world from now on. You know what I mean? The, the buzz on the streets. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, the bullshit. I don't know. You know oh, what I got? yeah. You got uh, – there's one. Did you see the article with the uh, – with one of the uh, gaming retailers shutting down 130 stores. Oh yeah, I thought it was 120, and they're like oh, going to refocus to 120 to 130, but they're going to focus it into being a cell phone store. Yeah, which is mind blowing. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, there might be a room for a health store, video game place soon. You know, like. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Any news I find out, I'll definitely pass it along. Dude, cool. patent that idea. Let's go out and do it right now. Do it. All right, guys. As always, you can find me at Sketchcraft. That's Sketch. They have the podcast, C-R-A-F-T dot com. We will talk to you in two weeks. 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 We will talk to you in two weeks.